Hey, my beautiful Scorpios, welcome to First Eye Visions. Peace, love, and light to each and every one of you beautiful people out there. If you are new, welcome. If you are returning, you already know what it is, beloveds. Love is love is love. As you can see, a sister's on a roll. <laughs> this would be your third reading this week. Um, obviously, I've been feeling really motivated. Um, I've had a beautiful weekend. So many signs, synchronicities, beautiful run-ins with a lot of um, animal totems. Uh, I actually saw a blue heron up close and personal. It was very beautiful how it happened. My daughter and I went on this beautiful nature walk we have a trail um right outside our complex and so you know i woke up yesterday feeling inspired i woke up again today feeling inspired and you know we went on our little nature walk and we seen like this this shadow casted over us and then when we looked up it was a blue heron and we just caught the back end of it so we was all flabbergasted over that because it flew over us and so, you know, we continue to take our walk. And when we returned back on the path, um, when we were going back, you know, to uh, where we started, um, just right there, standing right there before us was the blue heron, just standing as still as a tree. It was very beautiful. Um, and so we sat there and just took pictures and was just in awe, um, the symbolism and the poetry it was just very poetic in the way yesterday just kind of all these little encounters so maybe some of you all are seeing some really beautiful majestic animal totems um maybe some of you all are having some sort of synchronicities uh maybe you're having some sort of divine interventions period um these things may be happening uh, in a very synchronized manner, meaning it's like back to back to back. And it's almost as if, you know, the divine is telling you to brace yourself because something is is absolutely changing in your life. Um, for anybody that may be new, welcome. My name is Q. Um, I channel messages intuitively. I am an empath and I do listen to music and they tend to blend very beautifully with what comes out with the tarot cards. Uh, my readings are general. So my spiel is eat the fish, spit out the bones. If it doesn't apply, just let it fly by. Know that you're more than just your sun sign. So check your moon, check your rising, check your Venus, your Mercury, your Mars. Just check your other placements for a more clear and concise message for you. Okay. Um, my readings are also timeless. So whenever you see this video in your feed, um, if you feel compelled to push play because of the timestamp, because of the title or because of the thumbnail, that means this message was divinely meant for you. Um, so let's go ahead, beautiful spirits, beautiful souls, my beautiful people. And let's go ahead, do some house cleaning. Uh, I call upon the elements of water, fire, earth, air, ether and spirit ashe i ask our beautiful angels archangels ancestors ascended masters deities spirit guides spirit team animal totems earth mother gaia universe source the divine most high god our creator to shine a powerful powerful message of love and of light i call personally upon baba ubatala and mama oya and baba ogun to bless me with the intuition and discernment of my cards and so it is so more to be ashe 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 so with usher playing right now i do feel um this is called nice and slow um i feel like you're taking things very slow um you're not rushing anything i feel like you're not rushing any part of your journey it's like you're just really embracing everything, enjoying everything. It's like you're just taking that time to just appreciate the little things, to appreciate life. Um, if things have been moving uh, rapidly for you uh, in the past, maybe you've gone through a lot of unexpected changes or maybe there were shifts in, in your life, things that changed and transformed. I feel like now things are just kind of getting back into equilibrium back into harmony where as i said you're kind of like going smooth you're just kind of like smooth sailing you're just kind of like just letting things happen organically naturally for you um i don't feel you're in a rush i feel like you're just really in a space of 
just attitude of gratitude, appreciating. Um, maybe you're appreciating, as I said, just just the peace, you know, that you are feeling now because maybe things were really chaotic and moving really rapidly. Um, but now things are kind of slowing down. There's this uh, opportunity to kind of catch your breath, to get your bearings. Um, and you're really just in a space where you feel more grounded, more centered um, and more in uh you know, that that equilibrium, more in the emotional equilibrium, uh, maybe even spiritual or mental equilibrium, because I feel like things were just kind of moving really quickly, really rapidly. And it was kind of hard to to keep up. But you did. Um, you was able to keep the pace, keep the, you know, that momentum going. But I feel like you're really just appreciating that things are slowing down. There isn't so much of this rat race. There isn't so much of this, you know, this grind or um you know, this necessity to work as hard. Uh, so you're just really just enjoying that things are slowing down and there's just more of this, this pace that feels more um, inviting, if you will. So let's go ahead. We're going to pull some messages from, uh, of course, the numerology deck. Look what we got on the bottom of the deck. I love that number. That's manifestation. That's the number eight. So that number eight is telling me that for many of you, this is your, this is like just, this is something that's coming in is, it's, it's your just due. It's, it's meant for you. It's divinely being sent to you because you've earned it. This is like things are being balanced out. As I said, um, eight is the, the just, the justice card in, um, traditional tarot so I do feel like there is a sense that like you've worked very hard to achieve something maybe acknowledgement recognition and whatever you've been asking for or praying for because this is also the number of the star card whatever you've been healing from it's almost as if the divine has acknowledged you that the divine has taken notice and now there's this manifestation of whatever it is you've been praying for whatever petitions you've been sending out into the ethers uh, whatever it is you've been co-creating with the universe it's like it's going to double and triple in terms of the blessings um, you're gonna feel very blessed very um, financially free stable uh, you're gonna feel this sense of expansion growth um, but this is a beautiful uh, you know number of, of like you know infinite supply better days ahead uh, being that this is an all pink card I absolutely feel you're gonna feel very emotionally fulfilled there's this elation this joy this peace as I said uh, there's no more worrying I feel like the worries are gone any confusion any fears those are gone um, we have um, R. Kelly and Notorious B.I.G. Um, and this is called Effing You Tonight by R. Kelly and B.I.G. Uh, the name of the album is Life After Death. And I feel like that that message resonates a little more uh, than the Effing You Tonight, you know, because I feel like, you know, this is truly, like I said, a transformative time. Um, you've gone through something that was life changing and you've emerged a different person. Um, you've also learned some tools of the trade, you know, some tricks of the trade, like by you having to, you know, um, heal yourself. You've become a great healer. So you've become that conduit of change. You've become someone who's learned to transmute your pain uh, and turn that pain into power. You've learned to, you know, co-create with source to manifest whatever your dreams were whatever it was that you was desiring it's almost as if this awareness this awakening of the power you possess of the beauty that you are it's like you are really really um just exuding this this beauty this 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 attraction um this is like somebody sees you also as a star um, I am feeling like, you know, as I said, this has been a very slow process uh, because it's like you've had to go through some sort of pruding. You have to go through some sort of, um, you know, startling metamorphosis, you know, a growing pain of sorts. And now you're just the star, just radiating love, light, wisdom, wise dome, um, very grounded, very balanced. So that's beautiful. On the split, we have leadership can't make this up. So you've taken the reins of your life, just as I said, you know, um, feeling like, you know, that that person that has to, and this is an orange card. So this is really making you very attractive. And on the inside of the symbol is pink. And this is a pink card. So it's like this, this power that you have taken back 
has made you attractive. Uh, and it's because you know your worth. It's because you've prioritized um, your needs, your wants, your desires. Um, it's because you've, you're, you're in the space of self-discipline. Um, you're practicing self-care. You're also teaching people how they must treat you uh, because you've learned in the past by not being in that position of power or not being as assertive or being as, uh, you know, persistent uh, towards a particular goal or even assertive in a relationship, whatever it was. Um, maybe you were appeasing to please. Maybe you were in some ways enabling someone to behave a certain way. I feel like now there's no more of that because you've taken your power back. There's the sense of you know, strength, you know, really going through some sort of startling metamorphosis, as I said, and emerging someone completely different, someone that has graduated uh, into this position of power or someone who has evolved. You know, this is like reaching that level of self mastery, if you will. So this is a naturally a very attractive quality trait, characteristic and attribute to have. And I feel like with that 81, that's telling me that these are the changes you've made within yourself. And you've made those changes because that 81 reduces to nine. So you've had to kind of like, you know, disconnect from the outside world. You had to really um, you had to uh, detach from the people, places and things and search within for the answers that you may have been searching previously external to self. You learned gradually that the answers you were seeking were always found within. And so this is like that hermit mode where you're like self-reflecting, you're doing some introspective work, you're taking those internal self audits, uh, you're doing that soul searching. And so this is really making you more grounded because you're in the space of really meditating. You're in the space of really, you know, contemplating uh, what needs to change when you move forward. So you could be in a very protective bubble. Uh, do not disturb my groove. This is like access denied. So if people were trying to contact you, it's like you may have turned your phone on airplay mode. You may have blocked people's uh, calls. You may have completely changed your number, changed your address because this was a way for you to really heal and lick those wounds. Um, and I feel like you've done just that. This nine is also very symbolic of change. So now you can make the changes um, because I feel like, you know, whatever opportunities that were given to people, uh, however many chances people blew with you, it's like, you know, moving forward, that is, that is like, um, that's a deal breaker for you. You know, that's really something that you're not going to put up with moving forward. That was the epiphany. That was you discovering your love language and you also discovering the necessity of having those boundaries. So right now we have um, R. Kelly and this is called you to be happy. Um, so I feel like you're happier now. I feel like you're focused now on your happiness, whereas before you may have been focused on everybody around you, on their happiness, on their peace, on their um, on their uh wealth, you know, wellness rather. And I feel now it's like you want to be happy. So now you're being, like I said, um, you're prioritizing your needs. You're prioritizing what you need, what you require over that of the other people around you. Um, with the exception of your children, of course, your children are always going to be top priority to you. Um, but I feel in terms of other people, maybe relationships like your lovers, your friends, your family members, um, you know, things like of that nature. I feel like those people are going to the back burner and you're moving your your needs, your wants, desires up to, um, you know, to the forefront, to the to, to the the up to the prior up the priority list, if you will. So that's a lot of messages coming just from um, look at this individuality is showed up and there's a lot of cards that flipped over. I'm not going to go into all of these, but I just feel like with that individuality, that was something you may have had to learn um, in a former karm, uh, you know, karmic relationship was how to stand perpendicular in your square erect and stand alone. Your independence is ultimately a foundation, you know, for your stability, your security and your happiness. And that's why you're now not willing to settle or bend when it comes to your happiness, when it comes to your peace of mind, when it comes to the, the, the space you're in, you're not willing to compromise on those things because you did that for such a long time and you were unhappy. Um, you really weren't, um, 
feeling honored or valued in those moments. Uh, maybe you all were dealing with, you know, karmics such as your parents. Maybe you had a really difficult or estranged relationship with a parent. And so it's like as you started to forgive your parents, you started to see things lightening up for you um, in your own life because it's like forgiveness is always for you. A lot of people tend to think forgiveness is for the other person, but it's for you. So when you're holding on to animosity, resentment, pain and hurt, that's only an anchor. You know, it's anchoring you in a space of misery, of turmoil, of stress and trauma. Uh, when you forgive, it, it, it frees you. It's, it's freeing. It's liberating to forgive someone that has hurt you because you have to be the bigger person. You know, if somebody has hurt you intentionally or even if someone hurts you unintentionally, um, the forgiveness is always going to help you grow and help you to evolve. Uh, because we all are imperfect, man. Nobody is, is, you know, perfect out here. So we all have been on the receiving end or we've been the ones doing, you know, the hurting, whether we realize it or not. And so it's very necessary to have a forgiving heart and to be open, you know, be open and receptive to, you know, what, what can come out of a situation if you just forgive. Uh, because I do feel like, as I said, when you forgive, it really is very liberating and it does free you from staying stuck and stagnant. So with this parenting, as I said, maybe some of you all, that was a part of your karmic lesson. Maybe it was a part of, you know, a uh, 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 past life uh, lesson for you to forgive your parents, to forgive those that may have abandoned you, made you feel unloved. You know, maybe they didn't really support your dreams, but support you. Maybe you just had a very non-existent relationship with the parents. Um, but I feel like that's what made you who you are. You know, if, if that's a part of your your journey, that was a part of your that's a part of, you know, why you're here is to learn how to 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 uh, take that power back, you know. And so it's like you, you have to appreciate some of those difficult times. You know, not even some of them. You got to appreciate everything that you experience because you wouldn't be the person you are without those experiences. So I feel like that's something some of you all had had to learn, even if this is the other parent to a child or your children. Um, you had to learn to forgive those that may have mistreated you. I feel like with the 63, that nine, that's the highest number of change. Many of you have realized that you, you got to forgive that person. You got to let it go. It's almost like something was weighing you down for so long. And what it was, was the pain, the hurt, the trauma, the turmoil that you was carrying around energetically. You know, so I feel like le releasing that releasing that pain, letting that person go, forgiving them, having an open heart is what's allowing this beautiful energy to start coming in for you. I feel like the divine has something really beautiful um, waiting for you on the other end. And it looks like it's a love thing because we got intro love thing plan. So let's go ahead. There's a lot of messages coming out intuitively for my beloved Scorpio. So divine spirit of love and light. Let's see what we got coming in, going out, going on for my beloved Scorpios. Let's tap and tune in. Spirit, what messages do you have? What's the overall energy for my beloved Scorpios? And they have a message of love and of light. So you're going to have a love thing. This is like somebody that is, I feel like when it says intro, this is somebody that's like, they're, they're, they're entering into your life. You know, this is somebody that's coming in, into your life. So let's see. All right, divine spirit. We have a message of love and of light. For some reason, as of lately, I've been like cutting my deck three times, three ways. So overall energy and we have parenting. So we got parenting. So I feel like for some of you, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing like you, you've been healing your inner child. Maybe this is someone that you have coming in. Uh, but there is um, this healing of, you know, that inner child, someone who's been traumatized you know, with we got a love thing going on, I feel like in order for love 
to take place for, in order for someone to be loved. They're going to have to forgive their parents. They're going to have to forgive an ex. There's a forgiveness that's necessary. And I feel with this 63, that's nine, highest number of change. There is this, this opportunity to change the situation. There is a sense that there's um, a lot of internal work, like meditating to get things straight, um, deep reflection, deep introspective work, um, really soul searching and, and really gaining an awareness overall of, you know, what, uh, their love language is, you know, what they may need to change within themselves. Um, you know, I see this blue, uh, on, and the blue deals with the throat chakra. So maybe there was this, this focus on one's creative or artistic expression. And this has helped someone, um, learn to really embrace, you know, who they are, their authentic selves, um, and, and be fearless, you know, and, and right now we have Mokin stuff and Grand Pooba. This is called He's Mine. So maybe you was dealing with some sort of karmic who had you caught up in some sort of triangular situation, you know, party of three, four, five and six, like just somebody who was trying to be a player. So the forgiveness, as I said, there was a need to forgive. So maybe somebody betrayed your trust or deceived you in the uh, interim, seeking adventure outside of a relationship. Uh, maybe the relationship got a really, you know, really stuck. It hit a low point and somebody was seeking adventure outside of a connection, which means that they betrayed your trust and betrayed, um, you know, the sanctity of the relationship, the connection. And I feel like that's what led to some sort of ending with that five, five. Um, you know, this 55 uh, is 10. That's the highest number of change. So this was very burdensome. I feel like this also was a painful loss, a painful ending. Um, and it was just a tough pill to swallow overall because maybe this was something that happened abruptly, quickly. Um, you know, and I feel like you had to kind of like you had to kind of brace yourself and, and deal with it all. Maybe this has been like a roller coaster ride of not only emotions, but there's there was, you know, financial constraints. There was all type of uh, different areas that you had to navigate different terrain you had to navigate that was just unexpected and I feel with that individuality um, it literally turned taught you how to stand erect how to be independent of another person because maybe this was a codependent relationship or maybe you were codependent on this person perhaps for emotional support financial support or this was a vice versa situation but I feel like with this adventure um, someone was seeking adventure and it led to the demise of a relationship of a connection um, and ultimately it led to you know some sort of new beginning some sort of new journey um, where someone has started to you know move forward with with a different perspective a different vantage point point seeing things um, differently now uh, with he's mine, I feel like someone was really in some sort of, um, I feel it was like a, a competition, secret competition with another person. Uh, and the other person didn't even know, you know, that they were in, in some sort of com competition. And somebody was really fighting for someone's attention or fighting for someone to be with them. And I feel like the other person was just like, you know, they weren't they weren't in the fight. So it was like almost kind of like somebody was really. Um, somebody was focused on another person. This could even be like I'm hearing an overbearing parent, you know, very intrusive, very nosy in their child's business, even though their child is not a child anymore. Um, but it's almost like, you know, this is my baby. You know, it's almost like that mother, that overbearing mother who just won't let their son go. Even though the son got like a whole family, she still wants to be the main woman. She doesn't want to move her ass out the way so that man could be a husband to his children's um, mother. Or he, you know, it's like she won't get the hell up out the way. She wants to be the focal point. She's like in a competition, you know, for her son's attention. She's in a competition with the mother of her son's children or child or her son's wife or fiance or a new girlfriend. It's like this parenting. This is like somebody who's overbearing. And maybe the overall energy is that somebody has this toxic dynamic, this this karmic, which could happen to be their mother. 
you know, or they, I'm getting strong feminine energy, but this could also be, you know, even a father that's intrusive, but that's rare where father's getting in between, but that can happen. You know, maybe a father is interested in his son's girl and he could be saying little things to slight the son or to put the, paint the son in a negative light so that the, 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 his woman could look at him differently trying to sabotage. That's an option also. Like that's another, um, scenario I'm picking up as well but with this adventure there's also somebody that could be coming in towards you all that's going to be very spontaneous they're going to kind of take you out of your comfort zone um we have um ghost town and this is called Mabu so you know maybe this is somebody that you could have ghosted or somebody that could have ghosted you um but they do feel like you're their boo their bae their baby um their love you know because we had love thing and i feel like this person is coming in to kind of like introduce you to the new them maybe this person has changed with this five five maybe they was kind of you know in a hermit mode you know at some point with this double five i feel both of y'all were kind of like in a space where um you could have been like growing because five deals with the hierophant so maybe there was you know you both were like kind of like evolving growing um seeking higher knowledge uh you know wise counsel speaking to the elders in your family or speaking you know finding some sort of counsel um maybe in someone that you trust maybe through spirituality maybe even you know reading scripture or you know watching um some of these master teacher videos learning to manifest it's like some there was this level of focusing on self-improvement you know growth going back to school um working on the self five is also about expression so maybe there's been this 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 kind of like this epiphany this awakening to the real you to who you truly are to what your love language actually is to what you you require um you know as this new evolved person and so i feel with these double numbers um this is making you and the person you're attracting scorpios uh, you're going to be more uh, daring moving forward. You're going to be more willing to take risks. Um, you're going to be more willing to take the leap of faith moving forward because you've learned that, you know, you, you cannot just stay settled. Um, you cannot evolve and grow if you're just always doing what's comfortable. Sometimes you got to step outside of your comfort zone. I feel like you're going to have a really beautiful connection with somebody and they're going to be like your homie lover friend. Um, with my boo playing, I feel like that's going to be somebody that's my boo, man. That's my boo thing. Like this is somebody that you just like when you wake up, that's the first person you call when you're going to rest. That's the first person you call or text to say good night, to say good day. It's just that type of, con you know, kind of dynamic with this person where the relationship is just really kind of like you're building with one another. So and it's going to be very, you know, like it's going to be a ride. I feel like, you know, with adventure, they're, they're bringing this adventure, this experience excitement, you know, the spontaneity into your life. So let's see who there's a lot of messages coming out today. I'm loving this. So the person you're attracting, see that self love. What did I say? Working on oneself, the 61. This is the second time this week that the person you're attracting has self love. So this is absolutely somebody who has been working on themselves and they've built up the confidence because that 61 reduces to seven. You know, and that seven is the chariot in traditional tarot. And because we have ghost town playing, I feel like this is somebody that you may have ghosted in your past or vice versa. As I said, I felt like you were in hermit mode. Um, there was a lot of healing, a lot of self-reflection, a lot of introspective work. And, you know, this is like healing from, you know, past pains, traumas, hurts, um, relationships, family dynamics. You know, that nine is absolutely the highest number of change. So this person and you are both kind of like mirroring one another because we just saw that five five. So that was like really showing um, the work on the self, you know, the self care, the focus on the self realizing self-worth makes you more, um, you know, more attractive, more abundant, you know, self-love makes you more attractive and more abundant. But this person now is also learning that, that very valuable lesson that self-love is, you know, where it's at. Maybe they too were in a relationship where it lacked excitement. Um, it was just kind of just like, you know, the same old, same old, very, very boring, you know, very blase. Um, and I feel like now with these two blue, you know, there's blue in both of these symbols. And as I said, blue deals with the uh, throat chakra and the throat chakra is, you know, it can be associated with communicating, um, expressing yourself, uh, 
you know, artistically, creatively, or just, you know, through vocalizing your, your feelings, your emotions, um, your ideas. So there is someone that I feel is, is really wants to express something um, in relation to their attraction towards you. Uh, somebody who feels uh, like you're very attractive, very sexy, um, very beautiful. Um, I'm getting a sense of somebody who's really been feeling like this lack, you know, feeling like they've been missing out. They've been working on themselves a lot. Um, maybe they've been in a connection or, like I said, in an environment where they don't feel the love. They don't feel the support. They don't feel, you know, that 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 sense of excitement. Um, and that's why they were looking for the adventure with you, because maybe they feel like you take them on a completely different ride. Right now we have new edition if it isn't love. And so I feel like this person may be questioning, you know, maybe a particular relationship they may be in or even the connections, the dynamics, the chemistry with the people they have around them within their cipher. If it isn't love, then they don't want no parts of it. They're looking for something new with new addition. They're looking for an upgrade. They're looking for a new um opportunity a new love i'm hearing even so with this we we look at that effort so we're about to clarify how they feel about you and we have 13 efforts so they do feel like you have absolutely transformed 13 is the death card um and not only have you transformed but you've emerged someone different it's almost as if it's like whatever wasn't growing was dead so you've moved forward because maybe somebody wasn't putting forth the effort there wasn't enough effort there wasn't enough reciprocity there wasn't enough equal give and take and so you literally moved on you left a situation to go find Find balance to find your own sense of independence, your stability, your self-sufficiency. And I feel like this is what's making you really attractive. This is why someone may be seeing you in a whole new light. Um, and I feel like with it is, if it isn't love, why do I feel this way? So maybe this is someone, as we saw, that may have ghosted you or vice versa. And for whatever reason, they can't shake that feeling of love. Um, and this is somebody perhaps that did not make the effort and someone that knows moving forward, they're going to have to make the effort because you have changed. You're no longer that same person that will just kind of put up with the bare minimums. It's like they know they're going to have to put their best foot forward to come towards you because they see how much you've evolved, how much you've grown, and they see how much love you have for yourself. And I feel like this person is also leveling up in terms of knowing their worth and their value. And so they're willing to come in and make the effort. They're willing to come in and show you with their actions opposed to saying and giving you word service, lip service or uh, word play or gift for gab. They want to show you with their actions. And I feel like more importantly, you're going to feel it. There's this, this epiphany. I feel like somebody has some sort of epiphany, some aha moment. This is like somebody really getting a, 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 very, a really divine um, download, you know, transmission. Um, and it's like the divine is telling them, make the effort this time when it comes to Scorpio, because this situation that's dead, it, there can be some sort of um, reincarnation, a rebirth. There can be something that is resuscitated um, if the right efforts are made, if the right conversations are had, if the changed behavior is observed by Scorpio. You know what I'm saying? I was getting a lot of people who was leaving messages. This is this one person. I love you, sweetheart, but you don't have to leave your life story. I get it. You went through something. We all have gone through something, but you don't have to argue with me through the whole reading because as I say in the very intro, eat the fish, spit out the bones. If somebody has not changed, beloved, if you don't see no change behavior, they keep coming back to you with the same tactics, the same negative traits, the same lies this then obviously I'm not talking to you when I say somebody's coming back and they're going through their own dark night of the soul journey and they're taking onus and accountability whoever is coming towards you is somebody that has also been through something similar you know but they've also been doing the work you've been doing on yourself meaning they're coming back changed you know what I'm saying so you're gonna have to make that assessment some of you all are gonna be tested because this is what the divine does the divine is gonna test you to see if you're going to just accept somebody back because they return it or if you're gonna check for change behavior because you now know your worth and your value so you don't ever take somebody back if they run in the same old game remember we had um I forgot what was playing, but it's like you don't want nobody that's going to be spitting game and talking out the side of their mouth. You want somebody that's going to be honest. You want somebody that's going to come back and be transparent. 
You know what I'm saying? And you want somebody that's going to be, you know, almost like looking for your forgiveness because they know they hurt you. You want, you don't want nobody to just ignore what took place and then come back acting like you're supposed to just pick up where y'all left off without ever clearing up whatever happened or whatever took place. Because a real person that has um, empathy and that is um, remorseful, they're going to come back and they're going to do their best to give you the clarity you need and to apologize wholeheartedly, not come back and half-ass it just to get back in your good graces so y'all can like skip off into the sunset and it's just fake and fugazi. No, when somebody has had that opportunity in that time, if somebody has really gone through that hermit mode process and really did the soul searching, the internal work, they're going to see what mistakes they made. Just like when you did your work, you started to see where you was, you know, actually like enabling bad behavior or you was opening up yourself to being mistreated because you weren't teaching people how to treat you. Maybe you started to acknowledge, like I said, you started to heal that inner child. And so you realize like there was, there was some wounds there, you know, there was still some open wounds there that you had never even known existed until you went through that dark night of the soul journey, until you started to realize I got to do the soul work. I got to work on me. And so now that you've done your work, you should be able to identify and see immediately if somebody has done their work. If not, you keep their ass in the past where they at. You know what I'm saying? It's as simple as that, but I digress. So with this effort, somebody's going to come in and make the effort. We have um, Mona Lisa, and this is called Can't Be Wasting My Time. So this person knows they can't come in wasting your time, just as I said. So this person is really, really, they could be looking at your pictures, because when I think of Mona Lisa, I think of art. They may see you as very beautiful. Maybe some of you all are painters. Um, maybe some of you all are really like... Um, I'm hearing Picasso's. Y'all could be really like you into abstract paint, maybe, maybe painting. Um, maybe you're like an abstract artist where you like, you know, maybe you do that through graphic arts. Um, but it's really like I feel like some of you all could be artists of some degree, like painters, paint, uh, um, you know, abstract. I don't know. I'm just hearing abstract and artist. But I also feel this person looks at your pictures. Um, if they have photos of you, old photos of you, they look at those pictures religiously. Um, and I feel like they know they can't be wasting your time, just as I said earlier, because they see that you know your worth and value. They also find you to be very beautiful. So let's see. So Divine Spirit of Love and Light, how does this person, our beloved Scorpio, is attract and feel about our beloved Scorpios? How is this person Scorpio's attract and feel? See that? Time out. And so with that ghost town, obviously you ghosted somebody. You ghosted somebody and with that hermit reference, you, you definitely disconnected, you unplugged, you detached, and you created that safe space, as I said. I feel somebody's being very patient, but I also feel you've been very patient in this process, which means you've relinquished control and you've just surrendered to the divine. There's also this sense that you are listening to your intuition because you're highly intuitive. The two is associated with the hierophant. Um, I'm sorry, the high priestess. So I feel like there's the sense of you trusting your inner gumption, your inner wisdom, and you know that something is coming. You can feel it, sense it, touch it. Your spidey senses are going off, but it's because you've taken the necessary time to, like I said, like lick your wounds, heal. Um, and also, you don't want nobody wasting your time. That's why you took a time out. You put somebody in time out also is what I'm hearing. Because with ghost town, I feel like you put somebody in time out. You know what I'm saying? Back in the days when we was in school, they used to be like, go on time out. You know what I'm saying? It, they used to have us like facing the wall when I was in school. I remember back in the days when I was in school, like they literally would have you sit in a corner and face the wall so that you wouldn't be able to observe all your friends running around the class acting a fool. But this person right here, it's like the time out is up. It's like, OK, now you're going to be opened again. You're going to be more receptive again, because I feel like you've been working on yourself. You've had some sort of, you know, liberating moment, enlightening moment. And it's like it's really um making you feel more opened to the new. This 37 reduces to one. So it's like, you know, you've been through a lot of difficulties and there's been a lot of work that you've been doing on yourself. And that work that you've been doing on yourself is now leading to some sort of passionate new start, a beautiful new beginning. Um, this is like a new day, a dawning of a new day. The door to personal healing and happiness is also here. And I feel like because you've been working on yourself really 
balancing, grounding, finding alignment spiritually, mind, body, soul. This is really doing internal work, as I said. And as you do that work, that, like I said, that nine, when you're in that hermit mode, you evolve, you, you, you graduate to that 37, which is the 10. So now you can unburden yourself. Now all of your burdens are gone. And now there's this new start. Now there's this new opportunity to, you know, rebuild what was destroyed or to reapproach situations with a completely different perspective. And so with this pink or this purple, excuse me, I feel like there's a lot of, of uh, psychological or mental activity, I should say, a lot of downloads, a lot of interventions, transmissions, a lot of, uh, you know, communication coming in telepathically and intuitively, even just, you know, that, that epiphany of what you need, what you deserve. We have Brian McKnight here and it says, you should be mine. So now somebody that has been kind of like taking their time to come towards you, um, maybe divine timing, as I said, was always of the essence because with this two patients, I feel like balance was necessary. You know, things were out of whack, things were out of equilibrium and balance was needed, needing to be restored um, for not just you, but for both parties. And I feel like now there's this, you know, this movement, this forward movement, you know, that can take place. So let's see what's hidden for the person that's coming in for Scorpio. What's hidden in the energy for my beloved Scorpios? They have a message of love and of light. What's hidden in the energy? Thank you, spirit. And so we have nature. So things are going to happen very naturally and organically, which is why that patience was there. Everything is going to happen naturally because this is divine, you know, a divine counterpart, a divine union. This love partnership is showing me that this is somebody that you have a natural connection with. This 74 breaks down to 11. So that's like the divine feminine and masculine coming together. 11 is the twin flame number. That's like cosmic companions. That's spiritual union. And I feel like this person loves you, sees you as wish fulfillment. This could have been somebody you walked away from in the past because maybe this was an unrequited love. Maybe this person didn't give as much. They didn't show as much, you know, with that effort card. That's how they saw you. So they realized they didn't make the effort, which is what led to the demise. Maybe, like I said, in a former reading, they was trying to play too cool for school. They felt like they should have been chased and you stopped chasing. Maybe you started chasing them and then you just got tired of chasing. You know what I'm saying? When you chasing something, it's going to keep running. But when you stop chasing it, it turns around like to find that it's not being chased. And then it goes looking for what was chasing it. So now the runner becomes the chaser in some degree. And I feel like that's what's happening. This person is realizing that you should be theirs, you know, because the connection, what's hidden is they feel like this is a very natural, very organic connection. Like the two of y'all have this synergy this chemistry, you know, there's this, this magnetic pull. They feel this yearning, this calling. I'm hearing R. Kelly's, my body's calling for you. It's like this person is like calling for you, yearning for you, dreaming of you, thinking of you, wanting you, desiring you. It's like this person has learned to love themselves. You know what I'm saying? Maybe they was dealing with a lot of like iffy people, fugazi people. Maybe they had, as I said, a karmic relationship, maybe with their own parents, maybe with the parents of their children or somebody that had children. And they was in this karmic entanglement. And so they had to break free from that, learn to love themselves, learn their worth and value. And maybe because the two of you parted ways, y'all was in some sort of separation or there was just this disconnect because of a discourse in the past. And now there's this this desire. I feel like there's this, you know, it's just like things are happening naturally. That's why patience was there, because everything happens in divine time and good things take time to create. I feel like you was building, growing and learning to love yourself as were they with this self-love. And that's why the two of you may be communicating telepathically and intuitively communicating with one, one another, maybe having lucid dreams of one another. You know what I'm saying? If you're having dreams of somebody that you hadn't seen in a while, it could be because you're picking up on them thinking of you and vice versa. And I feel like with this nature, maybe this is somebody you bumped into out in an outside setting, maybe at a park, maybe at a store, you know, maybe in a parking lot, you know, maybe at your job. That was probably somebody that you bumped into and y'all had a good back and forth. But with this love partnership, I am feeling that this connection can grow into something that is very committed, very, you know, there's longevity, there's family, there's a, a legacy that could be had here because this is somebody that sees you as wish fulfillment. You know, this eight of pentacles, I mean, this eight is giving me like eight of pentacles, somebody that wants to come in and build and grow with you, you know, willing to collaborate, willing to build that alliance, that trust, you know, be that support system. 
you know, and this is that type of love partnership that you desire because this person also realizes your love language, which is why you put them on time out in the past because they weren't making the effort. Now they want to come in showing you that they're going to make the effort, you know. I feel like they're right now could be mustering up the courage to come towards you. And so we have um, Jeanne groove thing. So they're trying to get their groove. They're trying to get the groove. They're trying to build that, that, that strength, that courage, that wise dome. You know what I'm saying? Because they first have to, to get their bearings before they could come towards you. Because they don't want to come in wasting your time because they already know that you're not playing those games. So the outcome we have is pride. So there's somebody having an ego death. This 19 breaks down to 10. So this is like an ego death. You know, somebody realizing like, OK, you know, I got to get my groove back with intuition. Always trust your intuition. And I feel like you're also very um, sensitive to energy, to information, outformation. Like you are very psychic, very sensitive, you know, because we did see that um, um, the patience card which was, you know, 22. And so that's really letting me know that you and this person, or it was two, excuse me. Um, it was two, patience was two. So I feel like this is like really you um, trusting that intuition, as I said, and, 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 and really being discerning. You know, if somebody comes back all egotistical and cocky, it's definitely not going to be your groove. That's not going to be your, your type of party. So maybe this is what this person is learning to, to, um, to rid themselves of, you know, they got that this ego death is going to humble them. You know, it's really going to humble them because, you know, it didn't get them too far. You know what I'm saying? And if it, it get, if it got them anything, it got them into trouble, you know, because they only attracted, you know, other cocky, egotistical, airheaded ass people. You know what I'm saying? When you're dealing with somebody very humble, grounded, this cocky shit is not impressive. And I feel like that's what they see as you like you're natural. You're very down to earth, very earthy. You could be a yogi. You could be a Reiki healer like you're into, you know, very, very um, earthy things, you know, healing, grounding. You know, you're into crystals, you're into nature, you're into tongue drums and, Chris, you know, like, like meditating. You're, you're, you're very grounded. And so maybe this is what they're learning is they're learning you know, your love language, they're learning to be more, more grounded, more centered within themselves because that cocky ish is not really nobody cares about, you know, all of that superficial stuff. You know, you don't anyway. I mean, other people do, but I don't feel like that's not your that's not that doesn't that's not an interest of yours. It's like you could you get what you like. It's, it's like you don't feel like you got to be a label whore. You don't feel like you have to go buy what everybody's wearing. You don't even like looking like everybody else. You know what I'm saying? So this is what this person is realizing. Like, yo, that's not that's not impressive to you. You know, that's not your groove. That's not your thing. That's not what you're into. You know what I'm saying? So they really like learning, like to put that ego to the side, to put that cockiness, that conceitedness, you know, all that self, you know, um, that it's like they're becoming more self-aware, if you will. And on the bottom of the deck, intuition. You know, so they know you're highly intuitive with two, two. I feel like they're also highly intuitive. That's double numbers. And you know how I feel about double numbers. There goes the rebirth underneath that. And what do we say about new beginnings? You know, pretty much everything I said. This person is going to be very active now, as I said before, with that 67. Remember, we had 13. And that was the effort. And so this is the 67, which is also 13. So now they're really going to show you the effort because they're going to be more active. With this intuition, you're very intuitive. Like I said, you have evolved. You've emerged as somebody that is like truly sensitive. You read energy, you read, you know, you read uh, body language. Like you're very, very sensitive to when it comes to energy and vibration. And I feel like this is something that you've, you know, emerged as this person. You've gone through that startling metamorphosis, that growth and this new beginning. This is what you are experiencing right now because you have gone through some sort of, um, major change in your life so let's see what we got coming and going out going on let's get some messages from let me see what we're going to do next we're going to pull some messages from goddess guidance look at this i can't make this up transformation we just had rebirth show up and now we have transformation so this is like quadruple confirmation that you have transformed scorpios and this is your card you rule death and transformation you know so you've really gone through something that has you know completely shifted you 
um, shifted your whole world, shifted your consciousness. We have SWV. This is rain. And this is, um, you know, rain is a water element. So absolutely like a lot of healing, a lot of growing, you know, also just purging, releasing, getting rid of what no longer serves you. And we're seeing with this parenting, as I said, you could have been like healing your inner child, healing from your own, you know, parental issues, healing from, you know, mommy, daddy issues or healing from, you know, a toxic ex that happened to be the mother or father to your children, your child. You know, and with that rain, I do feel like you really just kind of like focused on healing, focused on, you know, ridding yourself, recharging your batteries, growing and evolving. And now that you're in this space of, you know, change and growth and elevating, it's like now you can emerge into some sort of new chapter. You could go towards a new beginning. So with that transformation, you've changed, you've transformed and you've experienced enormous change. And I feel like there's a lot of blessings that's going to come in with focused intention. This is showing that you are master manifestors. You could create the potions and elixirs to your life because, you know, as above, so below, as within, so without. Many of you could be utilizing, you know, this full moon energy that's coming up to manifest something new. And I feel like it's going to start raining down blessings, opportunities. See that independence? I told you that your independence was a foundation for your stability, your security, and your happiness because a lot of you all were in codependent relationships and it was necessary for you to break free from that so you can learn how to stand on your own square, how to stand direct on your own. And when you're codependent on another, on another person for survival, for security, so for stability, or even for your happiness or to feel loved, then you're always going to be needy. You're always going to need that person or need that thing. So it's like you had to be weaned off of that. You had to learn to stand on your own. This was a part of your, your karmic lesson. You know, this is what the divine had always had assigned for you. These were the lessons you had to go through. And you've, you've learned to become the healer. Medicine women, this is, you know, even if you're a man, you've become that great healer. Every great healer has to first heal themselves. How do you learn to heal others if you don't even know how to heal yourself? If you can't even, you know, apply, it's very, you know, wisdom is the application of knowledge, <laughs> you know. So this is how you all have learned. You've learned how to become that medicine woman, that medicine man, because you've had to first apply those things to yourself, those t techniques, those tech, those tools to yourself. And you learn what works from apart from what didn't, you know. So home, look at this. This card wanted to jump out. There's some, some amazing changes that's taken place within your own household. I feel like your situation is improving and this could be improving because maybe, you know, your home, as I say, I always say, like it could be your physical home where you reside in with your family. You know, maybe your home, you're, you're making some updates, you're, make, you're doing some decluttering, some spring cleaning. And so your home environment is really lightning. It's, it's like becoming that, that safe space. It's like your sanctuary. Or this could just speak to your avatar, your physical body, which is your home, that, you, that vessel. And you could be doing some sort of, you know, healthy changes within your home. Maybe you're working out more, you're exercising because you realize your health is your wellness. You know what I'm saying? Health is wellness. So if you're not healthy, then you're not wealthy, you know, and maybe that's something that you've come to realize is that you got to get back on track with your health. You're eating better, eating lighter. You're not eating past seven. Some of you are doing some fasting. Some of you are detoxing. But this is like the healthy changes you're making is really improving your life. You're seen as this divine feminine. If you're masculine, divine masculine, someone very powerful, very abundant, very nurturing or paternal, maternal, very beautiful, very attractive. And I feel like whatever you've been desiring, calling in, waiting for patiently, it's like it's coming in divine timing, as I said. And good things take time to create. So it's like you're learning to be patient. You're surrendering that need to control the situation the narrative it's like you're surrendering to the divine and you're trusting the divine because the divine has gotten you this far so it's like you're really trusting and i feel like by you trusting the process that's why things are coming in we have queen latifo weekend love so some of you all are going to be you know connecting with a a past love i feel like on a weekend you know you may go visit to see somebody or maybe somebody was going to be in your town over the weekend and they may call you up and be like hey you know i'm in your area what's up where you at where you live what's going on you know you just might have some i'm, I'm hearing spontaneity so it just might be something unexpected we got sacred space here nematoma 
And so with this, this is falling right underneath parenting. So that's absolutely what you did. A lot of you all have disconnected, detached, as I said, in that hermit mode and have been doing a lot of internal work. This is, you know, meditating to get things straight. This is also you connecting with a higher power, with a higher sense of knowledge, wisdom, understanding, connecting with your angels, your guides. And they're kind of giving you those little nuggets of information, kind of guiding you on the path. You're listening to your higher self and you're devoting more time to connect with that energy because it's really giving you the strength and the courage and the wise dome to push forward, to go forward. But this is like really even just, you know, if you have a, a altar in your home, really just utilizing a lot of your time, connecting with your angels. Maybe you're giving love offerings or you're just giving, you know, offerings, uh, period, to your guides, to your ancestors, your deities. If you haven't been doing that, maybe this is telling you you need to devote more time in front of your altars. Maybe some of you all are taking little um, nature walks or going to, um, you know, powerful places such as rivers, lakes, oceans, and you're doing some sort of offerings to Mama Yemenyar, Mama Oshun, or maybe you're just, you know, devoting more time to be in those spaces because you could feel the download. You could feel like you're receiving downloads. See that receptivity? So somebody is learning your love language, you know, with self-love. Somebody didn't love themselves, which is why they didn't know how to um, show love. Maybe they're learning their love language with receptivity. I feel like this person also was very, um, they were not available emotionally. I feel like they were not really as, um, they didn't reciprocate. It was a lack of reciprocity and they weren't open minded. I feel like somebody who's very stubborn in their ways, because that's what pride is here as well. And that's why they're having this ego death. Somebody's realizing like they kind of like, you know, they got in their own way. They sabotaged themselves to some degree because they weren't receptive. They weren't open and they weren't trusting of their own intuition and their own inner gumption. They probably listened to a lot of da -dun -da -dun naysayers, maybe even a parent, that overbearing mother saying, she's not good for you or he's not good for you or whatever the case. And it's because they're looking at things from their own, you know, um, toxic past or toxic experience. People can only give you advice from their own perspective, like whatever they went through. That's why I'd be like, look, this is my humble advice. And from my perspective, I can only speak from my perspective. I can't tell you how your relationship is going to work out because I'm not in your I'm not walking around in your shoes and living your experience. But if I see something that mirrors something that I've experienced, I could tell you from my vantage point. That's why it's very important not to submit your will. Somebody was submitting their will to a parent, submitting their will to perhaps a friend, a fake friend, somebody that was kind of like, you know, really, you know, kind of jelly over the relationship they had and giving them bad advice or misadvising somebody like miss misguiding someone I'm hearing you know what I'm saying until somebody had to learn to like listen to their own intuition use their own dis discernment you know how you gonna get advice like I said in the form of reading like how you gonna get advice from somebody that ain't been in a relationship that hasn't been in a relationship for 10 years like what the hell can they tell you except for how miserable the hell they are that's all they doing is spewing hate because they don't want to see you happy because if you in a happy relationship and they sitting here single then that means when's the time y'all gonna be able to come together because that person that you're going to be in a happy relationship with is going to occupy all the time that they're occupying now. So it's like misery loves company. And I feel like somebody's realizing that, which is why self-love is on the table, because now self-care is a part of their conversation. So, you know, that self-discipline, you know, self-respect, self-worth, dignity, respect self-love like they got to start focusing on their selves and stop listening to all these external people all the chatter from the outside world all these people around them and we have right now soul to soul this is called back to life so now this person is coming back to life because remember we had life after death when we was talking about that time out so now there's the sense of now this person is also going through some sort of startling metamorphosis they had to go through some sort of death and the death was because maybe they was also in a loveless connection or maybe they was in a relationship that was not really love. It was just control. It was somebody trying to control them. And so with back to life, however, do you want me? It's like now somebody really wants to show you they want to be open to this connection now because they don't like being ghosted. They don't like being on time out, you know. So let's see, why is self-love here for the person Scorpio is attracting? May I have a message of love and light? Why is this self-love here for the person Scorpio is attracting? May I have a message of love and of light? 
Why is spirit? Why is the self-love here? See that? Aphrodite, inner goddess. This I can't make this up. Self-love, and this is about self-care. So it says, awaken the goddess within through dance, self-care, and appreciating your divinity. So that's what this person is learning to do, putting themselves first. So the same messages uh, or the same lessons you may have had to learn um, formally is something that your person is now going through. I also feel like by watching you, by observing you from a distance somebody is also growing and learning by watching and observing you this person is also becoming like activated triggered this is somebody that does you know feel love you know there is a lot of love they do want to you know have some sort of rebirth or restart or you know when they want to hit the reset button on this connection perhaps you know because we have back to life maybe they feel like you breathe life into them into their um into them you know it's just like you're just a breath of fresh air we got go outside so there is a need for a lot of you all to step outside of your homes because a lot of you all have been just kind of imprisoned in the house you need to step outside and just breathe in some of that prana be amongst the trees be amongst the insects be just be out in nature uh you'll be surprised the downloads the divine interventions that you will have um whenever you bump into an animal totem just go see what the spiritual meaning is you know if you happen to catch the time that you saw it seek that as well speak you know seek the spiritual meanings of those encounters because i do feel like there's a lot of synchronicities things were really really you know happening very abruptly and i feel like that now things are kind of slowing down for you and i feel like with this inner goddess the person that you are attracting absolutely is is very attracted to you um in more ways than just physically I feel like this person is attracted to the type of person you are, the creative person you are, the artistic person you are, the earthy person you are. They're attracted to your power, your strength. They're attracted to who you've emerged and evolved into. Um, this is somebody that's attracted to even, you know, just how you carry yourself. You know, this is beautiful. And so we have John B. And this is I do what you say, boo. So. And so he said, if I ask, would you um, if I. If I ask, would you, would you say I do? So it's like, if, this is somebody saying like, if, if I propose to you, would you say I do? So maybe this is something this person is thinking about because we have blossoming. So this is something that's like happening behind the scenes. Maybe this is someone, you know, kind of like up in their head, contemplating, thinking like, what should their approach be? What should the strategy be? with them coming back into your life. Remember we had intro. So they want to reintroduce themselves um, into your life or reintroduce um, you to the new version of them. I feel with this blossoming, it's like seeds that you've sowed in the past, as I said, is starting to blossom and manifest, you know, this, this abundance, this success, um, this fulfillment. And I feel like you're you, you you have to just trust the process. Be patient with the process as well. I feel like that's what you've honestly been doing is just being very patient and very trusting of what's been taking place. You haven't been rushing anything. Um, and you, you, you've been very resilient. You've persevered through a lot, a lot of difficulties. But I do feel like, you know, that things are blossoming. Things are growing. Things are manifesting and it's all happening in divine timing, um, which is why you took that necessary time out so that you could work on yourself. The seeds that you've sowed, it's like the divine is saying they're, they're starting to harvest, they're starting to blossom. Um, and I feel like you're going to eat from that forever. Like you, you sowed in good faith. So whatever you did, you know, with with uh, the good intention, whatever good intentions you put forth into whatever it was you were manifesting. It's like you're, you're receiving this return. Um, and you can see she's like very, you know, you went through some sort of purification process. You was like tried and tested, like I said, pruded, going through some sort of like, you know, this is like pressure bust pipes, but look how you've emerged. You know, it's like this very delicate, but beautiful, strong, you know, divine feminine, even if you're masculine. And it's because you took the necessary time, as I said, to lick your wounds, to heal. And because somebody sees this beauty, you know, sees this strength as very attractive, this could be somebody that really wants to propose. And they're thinking to themselves, like, what would she do? What would he do if I propose? You know, it's very uncommon for females to propose, but there could be some of you females that are really interested in proposing. You want to kind of break some of those societal norms and say, look, like if I'm interested, then, you know, let me propose. That could be for a select few of y'all. But I feel like y'all are really pondering 
or somebody's pondering on whether or not if they asked um, for your hand in marriage or asked for you to become their wife or their hubby, if you would say I do, you know, would you say yes, you know, to that question. So we got Lakshmi here. And this is saying bright future. Didn't I say y'all have a beautiful new beginning, a new opportunity? Because we did see that new beginning here. You know, this is the new beginning, the bright future, the infinite supply. Better days are ahead. And this is all due in part to you finally knowing your worth and value and really like unburdening yourself, taking the time out to heal, taking the time out to, you know, release what was no longer serving you. And that's why you started to plant seeds to rebuild on more solid foundation. And I feel like now Mama Lakshmi is saying, like, you have a bright future because of, you know, all of this healing you've been doing. You know, as I said, you're very grounded, you know, in the connections that are coming in, whatever's coming in, uh, because this is what's hidden. It's going to happen. Um, it's going to happen very naturally, very organically. And I feel like, you know, with Mama Lakshmi promising that there's nothing for you to worry about, it's like you're going to be very excited, very overjoyed. And I feel there's a lot of abundance here. You can see these two elephants and this is like dual energy. So I feel like you're meeting someone that is like a twin flame, a like mind, someone who's equally successful, someone who's equally, um, you know, a, a powerhouse in their own right. You know, because I get like with elephants that that's a very um, that's like one of the largest, you know, mammals on earth. And I feel like that's just showing just how strong, you know, how how powerfully um, you've been moving forward. You know, that represents also wisdom. You know, elephants are very wise and that 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 raised trunk always, you know, is symbolic of, you know, abundance, prosperity, success. Um, and so I feel like you're realizing like things are opening up. I did say there was like a door to personal healing and happiness that's coming in for you all. Um, right now we have our Kelly, if I'm with you. So this 74 that breaks down to 11. So that's like that twin flame kindred spirit, that cosmic companion. And I feel like this is confirming that you're going to have a very bright future with this person. That's going to be like, look, if I'm with you, I'm with you. There's nobody else in the picture. They're going to have the same uh, perspective on this connection. Maybe this is somebody that realizes um, that they can only have a bright future with you. They can only have this abundance with you, that you're the one that brings happiness and joy. Uh, they feel that you're beautiful. I feel with this go outside, you know, maybe somebody is, you know, perhaps, um, as I said, maybe they're stuck in the house feeling in prison. Maybe they're like in a hermit mode where they're not really as active. They're not really as spontaneous. They're needing some sort of um, adventure or spontaneity in their lives. Um, maybe their pride and ego has them kind of stuck in a rut. Um, kind of stuck and stagnant, but maybe, you know, through going outside and having some sort of nature walk and maybe through the unconditional love that you provide, somebody is really having this opportunity to see things differently. Um, and they may need to, you know, start asking for what they need because closed mouths don't get fed. Like we said, we have this beautiful energy of expect the miracle, Mother Mary. So wish fulfillment, abundance, prosperity. You also have Mama Yemenya offering golden opportunities. So these are the doors that are opening up when somebody finally, you know, starts asking for what they need or start making the necessary steps, you know, to, to, you know, um, focus in and hone in on that self love, self care, you know, appreciating the divinity, which is creation, um, appreciating and you are the great creators, you know, as feminine energy, as masculine energy, the divine feminine and masculine are creatives. You know, you create life, you create potions and elixirs to life. You create new ideas, new ways of thinking. So I'm actually feeling like, you know, somebody is having some sort of ego death. You know, somebody's realizing like, you know, as I said, if they was used to being chased because of the cockiness and the, you know, that that attitude of it's all about me. I feel like you really you gave them. It's like you you um, deflated someone's ego because you put them on time out, you know, and, and you disconnect, disconnected and disengaged. So let's see. Why is pride here for the um, outcome for my beloved Scorpios? Why is pride here for the outcome for my beloved Scorpios? May I have a message. And we got message. See that? Independent. Independent. So this is somebody now that could also have been really codependent on someone else and maybe the pride the ego you know what i'm saying they maybe they need they were like attention whores 
you know, they needed that fix. They needed, you know, people to, you know, to feel validated. They needed other people to boost their ego, you know, and I feel like with this energy, you know, you kind of like deflated them when you showed, I don't need you. And you stopped chasing, you know, with the independence, you started to, to find your own power. You started to realize your worth and value. And with, um, it says, um, if I'm with you, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like with you, you know, if I'm with you, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, motivate, inspire and support you. That's what you were kind of saying. But with somebody who's very proud and egotistical, there was a lack of, as I said before, like reciprocity because somebody was up in their head feeling like, you know, they were entitled. And I feel like that really led to um, you breaking free from that connection and, and focusing on your independence, your stability, your happiness. So you put that person on time out because this is, you know, this 37 and that's 19, that's still 10. So it's like by you putting somebody on time out that bruised someone's ego and you said, I could do good by myself. I don't need someone. So by you standing erect and in your power, this kind of also, you know, woke somebody up to the fact that like, damn, I could lose Scorpio. The divine is telling you, don't get too egotistical. Just remain patient. I mean, uh, compassionate, excuse me, and also focus on the love and light, which is what you've also been doing, I feel. You know, you've been very compassionate, very sympathetic, very empathetic because that's your energy. But I also feel that you've been learning to be more independent. You've learned to own your power, stand in your power and speak your truth. You know, um, you know, this is really an energy of 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 one who was once um, kind of like codependent on another person or codependent on a situation and then kind of breaking free from that because remember we saw individuality in the beginning and so that showed me you know initially that you had to learn to stand erect and stand alone on your own we have inner wisdom we have true love here and then we have that divine feminine so i absolutely feel somebody is very much attracted very much adores you there is true love here but there is um a requirement you know for for there to be some more soul searching for someone to really trust how they're feeling because I do feel like somebody is like fighting it and the divine is telling you don't judge the situation based on how it appears because I do feel like there is somebody that realizes and recognizes um, that you're their divine counterpart and you know this as the high priestess you're very much you know that um, very sensitive as I said to int you know to energy and so right now we have Johnny Gill and this is called there you go and so maybe, like I said, with somebody, um, you know, you may have, uh, you know, blocked someone off with that time out. You may have told somebody, no, I, I'm not, you know, what I'm saying I'm not the one, two or the three. And I'm not going to be sitting around waiting for you to figure it out. You know, part of my back, you put somebody on time out. Um, we have playfulness here. I'm going to pull some messages from the angel um, romance deck. And then we have make the effort. Can't make this up. Remember, we saw effort in the beginning so this person wasn't like it's like they were you know kind of like I said before like too cool for school you know what I'm saying they weren't playful they weren't like you know charming they weren't they, they was just kind of playing too cool for school trying to be cool calm and collected or trying to be just too serious you know too too like a prude almost and it's almost like the divine was like look you got to play a little bit you know recapture romance allow your inner youth Sp youthful spirit to just shine through um you know on both of these cards there's a feminine and a masculine energy and on this card it's like you know somebody maybe the masculine in the past didn't make the effort as i was initially saying or maybe somebody in the past let me just say someone in the past um didn't make the effort because they was just you know too preoccupied but now it's like this person now is going to be more um more forward, you know, because they realize that it's necessary to take those steps that they're being guided to take by spirit. You know, they're seeing this as an opportune time, you know, and with self love, they've had to learn love language. They've had to learn how to read your love language, how to um, determine what your love language is or what works for you. Because maybe, as I said, they was very proud, they were very stubborn, even um, with there you go telling me no. Um, I feel like this person may have told you no in the past. Maybe there was an unrequited love scenario. Um, but I do sense that, you know, now this person wants to come back um, because they feel you're their soulmate. You know, this is like that kindred spirit. And the divine is confirming that, you know, whoever you're thinking of at this point in time, that is your soulmate. Um, and remember, this is for those people out there who, you know, doesn't have that toxic karmic that's still toxic. 
This is somebody that is growing, evolving, and you're seeing changed behavior. You know, this is somebody that you know has been really working on self-improvement, doing self-care, you know, soul work, healing, past pains, traumas, like doing the work, not just giving you lip service, not just telling you what sounds good. So if you start commenting, I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I'm, I apologize. I won't respond because, you know, if you at this point, this junction of the game, you got to you got to notice like you got to know. I can't tell you, you know, that's why I'd be like, look, don't submit your will to me. I don't have the answers. You got the answers. I'm just reading the energy. So trust. See that? So we have trust and this is clarifying parenting. And then we got sacred space. So I feel like trust was a major issue within the relationship. It says this situation is calling for you to have faith. And so for many of you, as I said, you had to trust the process to heal yourselves from perhaps uh, a familial trauma, childhood trauma, or even a relationship trauma. It's like you had to trust the process and you had to devote time and energy to working on yourself, to devoting time and energy to healing thyself. And that's what made you a healer. That's what made you a shaman, a light worker. This is why the divine is saying, look, trust the process. So trusting the process means that if this is meant to, to you know happen it's going to happen it says this situation is calling for you to have faith so if some of you all you you know if your person is doing the work because you would be able to see the change behavior you would be able to identify like i said the little things that has transformed within that person or the evolution that that person has experienced or gone through and this would be uh, obviously a message for you i feel like angels ancestors are conspiring behind the scene to bring some of you all back into union with someone and i feel as i said earlier there's a lot of lucid dreams seeing someone in your dreams because we have christopher williams singing i'm dreaming and so somebody could be dreaming of you. Um, many of you all, as I said, uh, if, this, if you're dealing with an overbearing parent, um, this person is, is also um, trying to interfere with a connection. And the divine is telling you to trust that the situation is, you know, you need to have faith in your situation. You need to trust what you're feeling. Some of you all may need to go and sit in silence to receive those divine interventions and downloads because you all may have somebody that, you know, is a parent that could literally be, even if it's not you, it could be the person you're attracting, but they have somebody that's in their life that's kind of like blocking love. They're, they're a deterrence to what this, this person is absolutely supposed to have. And so with soulmate, there it is again. This is a soulmate. So you are in a, a very spiritual connection with someone, even though you are apart. It's like that's why the divine is telling you, like this situation requires for you to trust because this is absolutely if you are questioning if this is your soulmate, your twin flame, it's it's right here confirmed. And this person is also having that awakening. As I said, they could be dreaming of you. You know, because this is saying, don't wake me, I'm dreaming. So this person doesn't want to be awakened in their dreams because this is when the two of you are in union. This is when they can embrace you and kiss you and hold you and see your sm smiling, fine face. And they're just like, they don't want to wake up. And it's because, as I said, you know, you're, you're highly attractive. They're attracting you. They're communicating with you telepathically as well. And I feel like they're building and mustering up the courage, the strength, the uh, wise dome to come towards you because they do feel and know that you are their twin flame, their soulmate. And the divine is telling you to have, you know, keep that open heart, you know, keep an open mind about the situation because it says your soulmate may differ from your usual type and expectations. So for some of you all, y'all might be just judging somebody based off how they look or judging someone based off of when you met them, where you met them, what they look like, their ethnic background, their age, whatever it may be. And the divine is like, look, that person that you might be, you know, overlooking is actually the one and the one that you think is the one is not. So it's like that's why they're like, look, keep an open mind 
because your soulmate could be somebody that you're not even expecting. Some of you all are calling your twin flame some old toxic ex that you were supposed to let go a long time ago. And the person that you're not even looking at is the one. But you so focused and preoccupied on the past that you don't even see what's right before your face. So it's like your divine masculine and feminine could be hidden in plain sight. And you're not even aware because you're so focused on the wrong thing. So with don't wake me, I'm dreaming. That's also could be like, you know what I'm saying? Some of y'all are like the self-deception. You refuse to see the truth or you refuse to wake up to the truth. So let's see. Why is um, self-care in a goddess here for what um, the person Scorpio is attracting? For this person that Scorpio is attracting, why is self-care and in a goddess here? Thank you, spirit. And so let's see what we have. And we have past life relationship. I can't make this ish up. So this is absolutely a spiritual connection, a cosmic companion, a twin flame, a soulmate, a kindred spirit. Like you can't make this up. Past life connection means that this is someone that you met in a former life. That's why there's so much chemistry, so much energy between you and this person. It's like a combustion. You know what I'm saying? When the two of you come together, it's like there is some form of like synergy that takes place and with you deserve love that's why you put people on time out because you know your worth and value you did it in the past but you learned it you learned through trial and error you learned through you know doing the work and that's why I feel like you know with this if I'm dreaming is here it's like now somebody is dreaming of you thinking of you constantly but this is a past life love this person is awakening to the fact that you're a past life love like this person dreams of embracing you they dream of holding you, as I said, kissing you. And then they waking up like, damn, that was just a dream. Like it feels so real. And then they wake up and it says you have known each other before. So it's like in another, I feel like in another dimension, y'all are together. But in this dimension, y'all are not. Because somebody has been like really like running from the connection, refusing to do the work in this, you know, because of the cockiness, the stubbornness, you know, and even just the ignorance, the blind ignorance. But def there's definitely some sense of like, um, you coming into this awareness of what you deserve, you know, you knowing your worth now, you know, you taking your power back now, you not putting up with, you know, anybody giving you the bare minimums, you know what I'm saying? And so we got Billy Lawrence featuring MC Light and this is called Come On. So I do feel like somebody is ready to come in, come to you, you know, because I'm getting come. So I feel like somebody's ready to come. You know, this is somebody that you want to come on. Um, come on in, you know, I'm hearing come on in, you know, they're going to come in and they're going to shoot their shot. And I feel like when you learn your, your worth and value and when you, you know, start knowing, um, you know, what you bring to the, like when you just change that whole vibration, you know, per impertinence to love, it's like, this makes you super attractive, you know, so you can see this, this feminine energy is like shooting a bow and arrow. So now it's like if somebody's ready to shoot their shot, I feel like this is also saying like, you know, you're going after whatever it is that you want to, you know, this is you also like, you know, manifesting and, 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 you know, setting intention and, and hitting your mark for what you want as well. You have a focused intention to hit your goal and you're going to do just that. So you could be manifesting what you want. And now whatever you've been, you know, seeds you've been planting, they're blossoming. You know, and we have come on. So something is coming. You know, that's what I'm getting as well. Okay, so this card just flew out. So this is like, I'm going to just take this, but I'm going to get another one. What did I say about unrequited love? So, yeah, so you was dealing with somebody where you felt like there wasn't enough attraction or chemistry initially. You know what I'm saying? And so that connection was, you know, it, it, it dwindled. It faded. You know what I'm saying? And so you took that time out to heal, to lick your wounds to learn your worth and value, to learn your love language. And I feel like as you started to work on yourself, you started to plant new seeds. And now those seeds that you have planted in good faith, you know what I'm saying? Trusting the process. Now it's coming. Love is coming. But in the past, how this person feels is like you may not be attracted to them. Maybe somebody felt like you weren't attracted to them. But this is like this epiphany now, you know, this is like, oh, snap, like it is worth waiting for. You know, because remember, time out. So they had to wait. They had to wait and not just wait in vain, but they had to wait, you know, wait it out to get it right, to get it together. And they had to do that on themselves. That's why you got this inner goddess, this this uh, self love, because they had to work on themselves. It wasn't enough attraction initially because maybe, as I said, because you were working on yourself, maybe there were certain things within you that triggered them, that mirrored it was like a mirror reflection, 
And so maybe there were certain things that they felt like that it, we wouldn't work out or they didn't see how it could evolve and grow into something. But the more you worked on yourself, the more they're realizing like, damn, you know, it's actually like this is more than what I thought it is, more than what I thought it could be. Rather, it says divine timing is at work in your love life. So let me get one more card. Why is this time out blossoming unrequited love here for my beloved Scorpios for how this person Scorpio is attracting feels about our beloved Scorpios and have a message of love and of light. And so we have forgiving and learning. What did I say? So now they want your forgiveness. Forgiveness came in the form of reading. It came out in the form of reading. It says as you release and heal the past, you experience more love in your present moments. What did I just say? You literally had to heal from the form of situation so that you could learn to be your best self your authentic self and that's why this person is now looking at you with a completely different look and then we right back at playfulness so now this time this person wants to come at you with a more light heart they want to come at you with this this sense of like you know they want it to be more natural and more organic like because they feel like you ground them you know it says recapture the romance allow your inner youthful spirit to to truly shine so now this person is ready to come on. They're ready to come in. They're ready to come toward you because they do feel like you ground them. They feel like this connection is very much. Um, it's that connection that could lead to happiness, to lead to, you know, family, lead to, you know, a legacy, building a legacy, lead to a bright future, happiness, that happy house, happy spouse, happily ever after, you know, having the dream, living the dream is what I'm hearing, Live, you know, that, that trinity, man, woman, child, you know, and the divine is like assuring you, like stop worrying because everything is working out just fine. It's going to be fine. It's already all right is what I'm hearing. It's already all right because I feel like, as I said, forgiveness is for you. I went into that spiel earlier about the need for you all to forgive. Some of you all don't, you're not forgiving, you're not forgiving. So if you're not forgiving, you're still carrying all this baggage and all this ish throughout your lifespan. You know how much ish people have done to you and you still holding on to, to, to regrets. You're still holding on to, you know, animosity, resentment, and then you carrying that around through life. You know how weight, how much that weighs your soul, your spirit. It's like an anchor. How can you move forward with a new relationship if you still mad at somebody you was with 20 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago? You ain't forgive the first person that broke your heart, let alone the last one. And that's why the divine is like, look, come on. Like, what, what are you doing? Forgiving and learning is the only way that you're going to be able to have a new connection. Some nobody's going to be attracted to somebody that's bitter. Somebody that's scorned, somebody that's like projecting all that hurt, pain and insecurity onto somebody else. It's like, no, you got to look in the mirror, deal with that ish before you start expecting somebody to come in and love you right. How you going to expect somebody to come in and love you right? You ain't even loving yourself right. You know what I'm saying? Love is an inside job. So playfulness. Some of y'all ain't even playful. Some of y'all are too serious. You're not you're not lighthearted. You're not like just enjoying and appreciating every moment. That's what life is truly about. It ain't about just being serious and so routine and so. No, it's like enjoy the simple things. Take a nature walk. You know what I'm saying? Go outside, trip on some shit and laugh about it. Don't be looking around, see who saw you. Who cares who saw you? You know what I'm saying? You got to live life free. You know what I'm saying? Like without the concern. That's why nature is here. Be natural. Be your authentic self. Don't put on a show. You know what I'm saying? If you like it, the universe loves it. Do what's best for you. You know what I'm saying? Stop worrying. That's what these words mean. Stop worrying. You know what I'm saying? You're putting too much worry, too much concern on things that really shouldn't be worried about. Like there's a saying, worry is paying interest on problems that may never come. So many people worry about things that's not even a problem. So if you're sitting around stressing over something that could potentially be a problem, then guess what? You're manifesting it to be a problem. So it's just like, yo, chill out. You know what I'm saying? Chill. Take a chill pill. Be playful. Have fun. Laugh. Go outside. You know what I'm saying? Run around. Roll a skate. Ride a bike. Sit down. You know what I'm saying? And we have right now, I wish. Call Thomas. So some of you all have wish fulfillment coming in. That's why Bright Future is here. That's why Mama Lakshmi is telling you, stop worrying. Everything is going to be fine. And for those of you who have forgiven, that's the message for you. Not the people still holding on to resentment and writing me 20 page letters talking about why they ain't going to forgive somebody because they is a, a they, this person was a, a asshole and he did me dirty. We all got the same story, boo. 
We all been there, but you got to do the work. You can't be sitting around mad at somebody that did something to you. You got to figure out what in you, you need to change. What do you need to change so that this person or anybody in life don't ever come at you like that again? So whatever your wishes are, whatever it is that you've been praying to the divine about, you have to be the conduit of change. You take a step towards the divine, the divine will take two towards you. So work on that. Communicate those, those things like help me to heal. Help me to ground myself. Help me to release. Help me to let go. You know what I'm saying? But that's what you need to do. That's the first step. For those of you who have forgiven that ex, that past person, even those that may have rejected you because unrequited love is like rejection. You had to, you had to heal from rejection. You had to heal from whether that was a parent rejecting you or whether that was a lover rejecting you, your fake friends rejecting you. You had to heal from the pain. You had to do that internal work. And that's why now there's wish fulfillment because we have I wish. And what he's saying is I wish I never met him. You know what I'm saying? I wish I never met her. You know, so somebody's like just dang. You know what I'm saying? Somebody thought someone was a wish fulfillment and maybe somebody bumped into the wrong person. And that's why they thought it was unrequited love with you. But now they double him back. Because now they want your forgiveness because they've learned a very valuable lesson lesson about everything that glitters in the gold. The grass isn't always green on the other side. And if it appears to be so, maybe it's because it's plastic. It's artificial. It ain't real. That was a tough pill to learn or a tough pill to swallow and a tough lesson to learn. But with this forgiveness and learning, it's like that's why the divine was telling you be compassionate. Remember, we had compassion. Quan Yin. None of us are without fault. None of us are perfect, so you have to be focused on the love and light. You know what I'm saying? The same mistake somebody else has made, you may have made them in your past. And you would have wanted someone to forgive you, give you another chance to not judge you. You know what I'm saying? So with playfulness here, I feel somebody that's very lighthearted. Remember, we had adventure earlier that showed up with the 55. That was double numbers. And I was saying this is something you both have learned you know what I'm saying? Because you've learned to be more lighthearted. You've learned, you know, maybe through an elder, maybe through going through some sort of, you know, higher, um, you know, just going through some form of like building your wealth of knowledge or learning or growing, you know, sitting under a master teacher and becoming more involved in that regard. It's like it, it made you more lighthearted, made you to appreciate life a little more, the little things, you know what I'm saying? And so right now we have Nicole Ray and this is called... Um, this is called regrets. So see that? And I feel like, you know, maybe some of you all, you, you, you could have been too hard on yourself. And the divine is like, look, you know, laugh it off, shake it off. You know, we're all imperfect. You know what I'm saying? So don't don't have regrets about anything, because I feel like, you know, that's why perhaps there's this message of nature. Maybe you need to go outside in nature, because remember, you had Cordelia telling you um, outside, go outside. So you may need to perform like a grounding ritual. You may need to go to a body of water and release. You may need to write all your thoughts down and burn it and let it go and forgive because you already learned the lessons. But you will repeat lessons if you don't. You know, if you don't start to pay attention to the cycles that could be repeating, you know, so you have to release. Releasing is, is for you. Letting go of the past is for you. Don't have regrets. Don't have remorse because we are all imperfect. These are lessons to teach you to be a better person. So be more playful. Be more lighthearted. So let's see. Why is nature a bright future here for what's hidden in the energy for my beloved Scorpios, divine spirit of love and light? Why is, thank you, spirit, got a couple of messages, bottom of the deck, engagement, can't make this up, remember we had John B, what you say do, would you say I do, if I ask would you, or something like that, well, like I said, engagement, there goes engagement, somebody going to ask for your hand in marriage, we got separation here, so you've been separated from someone, it says time apart from your partner is on the horizon, and for some of you all, if you are separated, I feel like maybe the two of you can reconnect, you know what I'm saying? Maybe there's an opportunity for the two of you to reconcile, to reconnect or heal a situation because you do have regret. So somebody's regretting perhaps even a separation, regretting being in separation, regret being um, ghosted or um, disconnected from you. And then we also have attraction. So maybe a separation was necessary because now you're more attractive to this person because of the growth, because of the evolution, because of you starting to stand independently on your own. You know what I'm saying? Your independence is always very attractive, you know, because you start standing perpendicular in your square. You know, you start taking your power back. You start building that confidence, that self-love. You start learning your self-worth. 
And I feel like a separation was necessary. I also feel like if you were separate, maybe this is saying like separation, you and someone that could be, you know, a twin flame could be at a distance from one, one another. You know, they could be distance, maybe emotional, even, you know, like a physical distance between you and another person. And I feel like maybe there's an opportunity because this says attraction. So laws of attraction by you focusing on the right thing. It says you're attract, you attract romantic love by enjoying this moment fully. And what did I just say about you just enjoying this right here moment? Like just enjoying the small things, the simple things in life and not paying attention to all the drama and the stress, you know? And so now with attraction by you lightening your vibration, your energy and, and just really attracting um, or focusing on the simple things in life, enjoying life, laughing more and being just your authentic self. That makes you more attractive because you now have that lightheartedness. And this is like bringing somebody that has marriage, you know, commitment, family, legacy, longevity, emotional. You know, they, they have like emotional intelligence like this is drawing in somebody that absolutely will speak your love language. For some of you all, you're already separated. You haven't been in a relationship for a while. You know what I'm saying? And maybe somebody is separating from another person to come towards you because the attraction is too strong. Like I said, they're longing. Chris, Christopher Williams was saying they was dreaming. So it's like they cannot hide this. And right now we have Miss Dynamite and it says, now you want my love. So now this person that you were in separation from or this person that you had put on time out that you put on, you know, that you blocked, that you was like blocker, blocker, blocker. Now this is making them even more attracted. Like I said, the runner becomes the chaser. You know what I'm saying? And with this engagement, they're coming back with marriage on the brain, engagement on the brain. It says your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. So some of you all who are separated, some of you all who are not in a relationship before you know it, you're going to be like somebody's going to propose. And you, it, it could happen very um, quickly. And I feel like this is going to be an explosion, explosion, because her name, this artist's name is um, Miss Dynamite. And this is called Now You Want My Love. So see that? So this person with dynamite, like somebody had some sort of, um, I'm hearing wake up call, but they also had, <laughs> I just heard, um, <laughs> I heard Paul Mooney. Um, <laughs> it's kind of inappropriate, but I heard nigga wake up call. So somebody like this is saying that he says nigga wake up call. But I feel like somebody just somebody had a wake up call. Like, you know, because they mess with the wrong one. It's like, you know, they, they thought you was going to be like, you know, somebody just kind of like, you know, always there waiting on them hand and foot. And then they had that wake up call. Like they, they got that 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 piece of humble pie. Like you, you really deflated that ego. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like you just focused on the self, you know, independence. You know, you started to stand, you know, erect, stand alone, find your power. And with this, this is making you even more attractive because look at you. You ain't studying you. I'm focusing on me. I'm enjoying the simple things in life. Some of you all are learning how to to garden. You could be growing like a rose garden. You know what I'm saying? You could be like really like um, trying to grow your own herbs like sage. I heard some of you all are growing thyme, rosemary. It's like you're really just like really being like you have a green thumb now very earthy like you're, you're really like putting your hands in the soil in the dirt you know maybe you're repotting your plants in your home you know you're repotting you know really just like really i just see somebody's hands just emerged in the soil you know maybe a lot of you when you do your spell work or you you're doing like um love rituals or you're doing manifestation rituals maybe you bury your uh, jars in your plant soil you know maybe that's something that you all do and then you pull it out ever so often and then you rebury it or you just rebury you just bury it and leave it there for three four five six months and then you pull it out and it's just like that um it's just more powerful i'm getting that for a select few but with engagement engagements in your future now somebody wants your love somebody that you were separated from that initially thought this was unrequited you know what I'm saying? Now they've having this epiphany, this wake up call like, oh, snap, this is a past life love. That's why I love Scorpio. That's why I'm still thinking about Scorpio, dreaming about Scorpio. All right. So let's see. Why is this pride and independence here for my beloved Scorpios? 
for the outcome, divine spirit of love and light. Why is pride here for the indep and independence for the outcome? Thank you, spirit. And so we have this could be the one. See that? So now somebody is saying, damn, this could be the one. And it's because divine, you know, spirit is knocking them over the head like, look, you already met the one. You looking for something you already found. And what did I say about somebody like being hidden in plain sight? That's why we had earlier that, you know, this is somebody that you may not expect. You know, the one you're seeking may, you know, may not be the one that you're thinking is your one. And, and that's why, you know, now somebody is like looking back like, damn, wait, is Scorpio the one? Because maybe somebody that they thought was the one they learning that that's not the one. Somebody's building their finances, getting their money right. I feel like that was a focus of yours as well, because whoever you was with, they could have messed your money up. Maybe this is why this person, you know, is in a state of really like focusing on self-care, because now they have to prioritize whatever it is they have going on. Because maybe before they was really stuck in something that, you know, was codependent. Or maybe this is something you've had to learn to not deal with, you know, codependency, but to really be in a space of like being able to take care of your own priorities and own responsibilities. But with this energy, finances and career, this could also just be speaking to, you know, just kind of like improving some things, you know, making things work. The divine is telling you to make some sort of pay attention because it says pay attention to the red flags. So maybe somebody is in a connection with somebody that, as I said, in a former reading could be using them for money. And that's why they're going to be separating from that energy and going towards what they're truly attracted to. And we have Queen Latifah, and this is called Set It Off. And this is going to set off some sort of like drama, beef. So let me see what we're going to pull now. Let's see. We're going to get the uh, African American Tarot. So let's see. And I see the Six of Cups. So somebody from your past looks like they want to work their way towards you. And this is like somebody that, uh, as we already see here with the ten, the time out, like you already like definitely put somebody on time out. You just created a boundary, I feel like you wasn't letting nobody play with you in your time anymore. And look at that. That's because somebody was trying to be a player. And with this, you know, wand on fire, I feel like somebody got burned. You know, they may have gotten burned like they may have caught a, uh, some sort of spiritual transmitted disease or like an actual sexual transmitted disease. You know what I'm saying? Somebody was trying to be the player. This is that flighty, in and out, impulsive, unreliable, you know, and that's why they had to learn self-love because they was just out there just giving the D, giving the P to everything. Anybody stick and move is what I'm hearing. Stick and move. See that? Now, all that passion, fire, desire and what set it off. It's like that's what set off alarm. That's what caused alarm in you because you just felt like this person was just out there sleeping with everybody. Look at that. This is like this is like sexual addictions, addictions, period, afflictions. This is somebody who has attachments. And that's what you was dealing with. Somebody who was wearing a mask, being fake. You moved away from that energy. You see the six of swords. That's the same as that timeout energy. You started to focus on you. You started to focus on your creativity, your artistry. You just you ain't even looking at this 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 caped person. You're looking past them. You ain't even got the time or the energy. That's the time out you put them in. Remember I was saying like somebody, you know, it had to be put on time out, you know, facing the wall. This person is still watching you. You know what I'm saying? They're still watching you learning, you know, because remember we had forgiving and learning. So they want your forgiveness, but they've been learning because you've been learning. You know, you've been growing. You've been going through that transformation, through that rebirth, you know. And so look at that. The three of swords. So this, this person caused a lot of pain and hurt. Maybe somebody's going through some really painful times. They're feeling the pain they could have inflicted upon you. Or maybe this is what you had to endure. And this is why you're evolved. You know, you, you've had to be, you know, um, it's like that's why you had to forgive. You know, somebody really stabbed you in the heart. I feel like, you know, they stabbed you in the heart. You opened yourself up to love and they stabbed you in the heart and maybe rejected your love. You know, they rejected you because you see how he's handing this person like this basket or this whatever that is. He's handing it to him and he's like, I don't want your shit. I don't want it. And he's like, damn near, like he's, he's like on his way out and he's just not accepting it. And it's because there was unrequited love. Somebody didn't accept your love offer. They didn't accept it. It was just like, no. Nah. And that's because of they were unsure. 
and they were unsure because they had other connections. You know, so let's see what we got. We got the nine of pentacles. So this is you growing, learning, you know, learning to trust yourself, trust the process. You're learning to build on your own. You've been working very hard. The nine of pentacles is somebody that is very like steadfast, focused, eyes on the prize. You worked very hard. You was very sturdy, very strong willed, very mindful, very intentional. You know, and that's the energy of regalness, royalness, knowing your worth. That's like pre-empress, pre-emperor status. You know, you have nine pentacles all on your own. Now somebody wants to come in and, and shower you with, you know, all of the attention, all of the grat gratitude. It's like they want to be very generous. They want to give to you. They want to build, you know, security. And it's because they see you as beautiful. The empress is here. They see you as wise. Their love flows. It's like you're very attractive. You know, there's a the magnetism and the strong attraction, this yearning and longing, longing that they want to provide st security and stability. So let's see Divine Spirit of Love and Light. And so we got Mary J. Blige, I'm the only woman. So you're the only woman to this person, but maybe you weren't in the past. Maybe that's your sentiment. Like, look, I'm not going to be no side piece. I'm not going to be no third wheel. I'm not going to be the other woman. I'm not going to be the other man. I'm the only woman you need is what Mary just, J just said. See that? And it's funny because the Queen of Wands is usually depicted as the mistress. So this is that mistress who caused a lack of trust in this connection. This was a toxic connection, an entanglement of sorts. This is that other woman, mistress, somebody that caused stress. She was a snake, a serpent, spoke with a forked tongue change the whole dynamic and frequency of this connection and with that parenting maybe this was the mother or father to their child maybe this was that mother that overbearing mother that was trying to come in between this connection this was somebody that was really like I feel like you know this person could have been like just overbearing causing you know trust issues like being like that that stick in the wheel and it's just is like that attachment that karmic you know a karmic isn't just like a girlfriend, an ex, a, a boyfriend. This just could be a mother. It could be a family member. It's, it could be anybody, you know. And so with this, I'm the only woman you'll need. And I was telling you about an overbearing parent earlier. This is that woman saying, I'm the only one. I'm the, I'm the only woman. I'm the, the first one. Even though this person has a family because we got parenting here. Or maybe just, just because this is the parent to that person. Very controlling. My way or the highway type of personality. Very nasty attitude. See? And she's saying, you know, all I wanted to do was be your wife and make you happy. But this, this damn overbearing person, even if this isn't someone's mother, this other woman was trying to, you know, cause some sort of, um, some sort of separation, some sort of confusion in this dynamic. And this 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 rocked, you know, the foundation. This really broke the trust overall. And that's why somebody retreated and, and started to really devote more time to working on themselves spiritually, emotionally, mentally, you know. And with this devil here, this devil is very toxic, very negative and a gaslighter, a master manipulator. And they don't mean good. And this is somebody that tries to keep you stuck. And in, I hear entanglements and you can see this web. So I feel like there's a web of lies that somebody's weaving someone in. And that's why this person is learning self-love. That's why this person is realizing that I have a past life connection with my Scorpio. And that's why this person, maybe this is somebody who has, um, you know, this attraction towards you. And that's what's breaking them free, perhaps, you know, they're breaking free from this toxic past, this toxic ex. Or this toxic karmic, this toxic mother, father, whomever. So let's see. Why is, um, why is, ooh, strength. They're building up, mustering up the strength. Didn't I say that? They're mustering up the courage, the strength, the wise dome, so that they could come toward you. Self-love, self-care. This is about self-discipline, taking your power back from this old toxic ass shit. This is toxic so that they could have the victory with you. They don't want to be a timeout. They don't want to be in separation. They don't want to be in opposition of you any longer. They want to come towards you because you're the only one they need, according to Mary J. Blige. I'm the only woman you need, only one you need, so trust me. I'm chopping up the lyrics. But this is what this person realizes. They have this epiphany. Look at that big sun, that big, beautiful sun. 
It could even be the moon. And he has six eyes. So this is somebody that's very in tune, trusting their, you know, using discernment and their intuition. Also, somebody that has to take their power back. So it's like they're taking their power from this overbearing person. You know, that's why we had that self-love, because now they're realizing, you know, they got to love themselves. They can't let somebody like, you know, misguide them, mistreat them, misinform them. And that's what they had to cut free. See this little, you know, tool, this vessel to cut that axe. It looks like an axe. He had to cut himself free and he also had, you know, trust his own subconscious, his own thoughts. What works for me? What's best for me? And taking the power back, you know, strength, courage and wisdom. And that's what they're owning now. And with the six of wands, this is what they want. They want the victory with you. They want this major breakthrough. And we have um, faded pictures. And wasn't I saying like somebody was looking at pictures of you, like somebody was looking at photos, old photos I don't know if that was in this reading or if a, a former reading that I was doing, but I feel like somebody was just looking at your pictures, just constantly looking at your photos. And with that time out, it's because they don't have opportunity to communicate with you, you know, and maybe it's because they really confused the situation to be one, um, you know, a, a connection that was unrequited. Maybe, you know, it was initially unrequited because they didn't reciprocate, you know, but now they're realizing like they want your forgiveness because they've learned you know, they've learned from this, this, this situation. They've learned from being in separation. You know, they don't want things to fade between the two of you. They don't want this connection to fade because we have this, you know, look at that. They see you as wish fulfillment. This person wants to reconcile. They want to reconnect. This is somebody that wants to rush in. So we got the six of wands. So that's the victory. This person can absolutely see themselves marrying you, proposing you. This is like a ceremony and they're going to rush in. Look at this sprinter. So this is somebody that's going to rush in because they feel very confident. And this is also the nine of cups. So this is somebody that absolutely sees that you've been loving yourself, you know, with that self-care or that time out. That's like really like focusing on me, myself and I self-love, self-care, you know, and that's what they've also been doing. So there's like, you know, they were mirroring you in that regard, learning to put themselves first, learning to heal themselves from any past pain. You know, maybe seeking wise counsel, maybe getting some sort of advice from an elder in the family. But it's like they're reflecting back. Maybe the music kind of makes them think of you with faded pictures here. It's like this person may look at old photos or maybe they're just, you know, recapturing old memories. Just very nostalgic energy thinking back. And it's, it's like all their thoughts. It's like all the times that they think of with you is just like good times, you know, sharing good times, good moments, good music, laughs. You know what I'm saying? And this is what's making them want to rush towards you. There could be distance. You know, there could absolutely be some sort of distance between you and them. You know, they may have to travel to see you. Maybe there's emotional distance. They don't want that distance to continue to build because they don't want it to fade. You know what I'm saying? They don't want things to fade out, you know, or fade to black. So why is time out blossoming unrequited love, forgiving and learning here? For how this person feels for Scorpio. Six of Swords can't make this up. So you have definitely moved away. You've moved on. I feel like you've also changed your whole perspective of this person in this situation. And I do feel like you have forgiven them. They realize like in order for them to come in, they're going to have to ask for forgiveness. But I feel like you've already, you know, accepted the apology you may have never received. This person is ready to communicate. You see that? The six of swords, your back is turned. You don't realize somebody wants to speak to you. It's like they're learning from watching you. They see you as very wise. Maybe you are looking past, you know, anything or anyone that may seem to be like, you know, blocked off or, you know, because um, with this hood, I always feel like that's some like some somebody that's like has hidden motives, agendas, somebody wearing a mask, you know, somebody very fugazi, untrustworthy. But you're not even distracted by that. You know, you want some block a block a block. You're not allowing this energy to come you know, to come in between you, to distract you, to sway you off your path. You're looking very, you know, focused on your, your front and center, you know, and it's with this beautiful feather in your hat. It's like there's definitely like this energy of like you're being spiritually guided, you know, you're being spiritually guided on this path. And I feel like somebody is also wanting to communicate, express. This could literally be the same energy, you know, you're very wise, very, you know, you, you don't take no mess either. And that could be like, you know, why somebody wants to come in and forgive, ask for forgiveness. We have um, Jeanne off my mind. So this this person's definitely like 
you know, the, the, I, I don't want to say they're not, you're not thinking about them, but I feel like you're more focused on what you have going on. You know, you may think about them from time to time. They may chronic, run across your mind, but you're not, they're not your focal point. Maybe in the past they were, you know, initially, but you had to block that out. So they're off your mind, they're off radar, out of sight, out of mind. And you're like I said, like you ain't looking at them, you looking past them. But they're still watching you and they're secretly watching you. They're watching you from a distance. And that's why I said they're forgiven. They're wanting your forgiveness, but they're learning from you. They're learning by watching you. They're feeling really, really um, motivated and inspired to come towards you to work this out. It's like they're, they're having some sort of epiphany and they're feeling like really sick in the head because they think about you a lot. Like they're always in their head thinking about you. And it's because they was trying to be a player juggling you juggling another situation or maybe because they allowed, you know, the situation to get out of control. You know, maybe there was a lot of, you know, lack of reciprocity, lack of, you know, effort because they got preoccupied or there was a lot going on. But I do feel like, you know, this person does feel like they've missed an opportunity, you know, and that's why they're sick in the head. You know, maybe somebody is like heartbroken, love sick. Some of you all could work. Um, I don't know, maybe you work in healthcare. You know, maybe they feel like only you can, you know, heal that heart. Maybe only you have the power to, to nurse them back to health is what I'm hearing also. Like they only want you to do it. Nobody else can do it. Cause you see how he's like in the bed, but he's smiling almost. It looked like he got a big old smile on his face. I ain't never seen nobody sick, but he's smiling. And it's like, because they only want you to nurse them back. I don't know, but let's see. So why is the um, nature Lakshmi separation attraction here for what's hidden in the energy for my beloved Scorpios? Thank you, spirit. Can't make this up. Nine of Pentacles. You are very attracted because attractive because you focused on you. What did I say about some of y'all could be planting? And that's literally what the Nine of Pentacles is like. You're planting new seeds and we already see that with blossom. And so the seeds you've planted, they're starting to blossom. You're building a harvest. This is like better days. You know, infinite supply, better days ahead, you know, and this is making you more attractive because you're not preoccupied with anything other than what you are working on, your self-improvement, your self-care, you know, but you've been working very hard and your hard work is paying off. You have nine pentacles all on your own. So that makes you very regal, royal. This person can see that you're very busy, baby, you know, and you're not allowing anybody to distract you off your path or off your course. Some of you could be growing fruits, vegetables, watermelon, cantaloupe. Some of you are growing cabbage, greens, lettuce, tomatoes, apples, lemons. Like I, I see you all like I just get green thumb like y'all are just like in the garden growing roses, sage, rosemary, you know, thyme. A mint. I don't know. Some of you all are really like using. I, I'm just getting green thumb. And this is like you're you're really focused eyes on the prize and you're very successful, very abundant in whatever it is you're doing. There's a lot of recognition. This is money, money, honey. That's why the divine is like, stop worrying. Everything is working out fine because it's like you're not getting distracted. Somebody has deceived themselves. Maybe somebody self-deception, you know, with this lion. You can see this monkey is trying to trick him so he could get a sip of water. But how is he going to remove himself from this situation? You know what I'm saying? You could deceive him, but for so long, but ultimately they're going to catch you in this lie. So it's like somebody got caught in a lie. This is like self-deception. Maybe there's a lot of people that was in on some sort of trickery. As you see all these people up here at the top, you know, and they was trying to gaffle this line. Remember the strength. We got the strength here. So this person had to like. They had to take their power back from a situation. Somebody was monkeying around playing games. We got Bell Biv DeVoe. This is called Do Me. So somebody was trying to do someone in. You know what I'm saying? Somebody was really trying to do someone in. And that's the pride. You know, the, the lion is a very powerful animal totem. He's the king of the jungle. He's also depicted as someone very proud, very strong, powerful. And I feel like, you know, this is why. You know, his pride, he, he just got played by a monkey, you know. So somebody, like I said, you know, the, the, the somebody, um, I was saying somebody got the uh, 
wake up call. You know what I'm saying? So this is like a wake up call. Somebody's ego was deflated. You know, he thinks he's the king of the jungle, yet he's getting played by this little docile monkey. And it's because the, the monkey wore a mask. So maybe somebody got gaffled, played for boo boo the fool by somebody they was in a codependent relationship with or somebody that was codependent on them. And now they're breaking free. They're leaving a situation. Somebody was trying to do them in. But now we see here with this could be the one. Somebody's looking at a situation, assessing a situation again, because they realized they was deceiving themselves by running from a situation only to discover they was running from their, they was trying to run from their shadow. You know, they were trying to run from their own shadow. So why is this pride independent? And um, this could be the one here. So we got um, the, I can't make this up. The Wheel of Fortune, beloved. So this is something turning around in your favor. This is a very fortunate outcome. Very successful, very abundant, whatever. Look at that. Six of Wands. I can't make this up. Somebody is coming in and this person really, really is feeling like they want to, they want to, I feel like they come in, in like it, the time is now. I just get time, you know, because this is the wheel of fortune. So we all know that this is about what's destined to take place. This is what's preordained. And I feel like it's, it's due. The time is now with due me. I feel like this person, this is due. This is overdue, past due. This person is coming now. Because whatever was trying to block this connection, it's like the divine is moving everything forward. This is like moving forward. This is about, you know, um, removing that stick from the wheel as well. Somebody that was trying to do someone in, it's like the divine is moving someone out the picture. Things are turning around in your favor. And this is leading to some sort of victory, some sort of breakthrough. This is leading to marriage. This is leading to, look at this, wish fulfillment. You got the six of wands, the nine of um, cups, and you got the four of wands. I can't make this up. So this is absolutely somebody that feels like you're their twin flame. You're like that happily ever after. This is somebody that does not want this connection to be over. This is somebody that wants to come in and they want a do over. I'm hearing do over. They also want you to do them. They want you... They want to make love to you like this is somebody that's very passionate about you, very attractive, very attracted to you as well. And I feel like they went through hell and high water. I feel like they also like you, you was very cold to this person. And they felt like you, you blocked them out of your life. Like, you, you know, this is like access denied because I feel like this person is frozen. It's like they, you know, they're in some sort of cold atmosphere maybe they were somewhere and they, they, they felt you're, like you was being cold towards them because we did see that king of swords so this person may feel like you you were being cold towards them and maybe it's because they was being sneaky snaky they wasn't being honest they were speaking with a forked tongue you may have caught them in a lie because we do see that trust was an issue that was the overall energy and that same snake that's on this energy so there was somebody that came in between this union you see the same snake that's on this card, the Queen of um, Wands, is on the same, on the uh, Nine of Cups. And you see how that queen, uh, I mean, that snake is kind of coming between this masculine and this feminine. And this person already sees you as a star. They already see you as someone that can heal them. They already see you as somebody that's very nurturing down to earth. They're divine feminine or divine masculine. This person was being, you know, like they was trying to come in between like draw a wedge between you and this person and that's why we had trust there and that's why this queen of wands was there so there was somebody doing some sort of like something to um you know to to draw a wedge between you and this person but i do feel like there's a re you know a reconnecting a reuniting of of energy you know somebody is being very resilient because this is somebody that loves you you know what i'm saying this is somebody that that feels that like you you match their fly and we got Please Don't Go playing by Boys to Men. So that with the Boys to Men, I do feel like this person had to grow. Look at this sun card. You make them happy. You know, their skies could be gray right now. They could be really in a dark place, you know, because they're dealing with some old dark ass energy that feels like they have the power. They have the right to manipulate their energy, you know. And with this black cat here, you know, they definitely could be someone that could be, you know, resorting to doing some sort of... um some sort of root work or spell work, you know, and I feel like this is saying that this person, you, you know, um, 
is, is it, they could be very threatening, you know, to this person if this person doesn't use their intuition. But I feel like somebody is really starting to focus and hone in, you know, because that 61 is seven. So I do feel like they're getting divine interventions, downloads. Maybe they're having certain little uh, synchronicities that are taking place and they're starting to pay attention to that. And they're mustering up the strength, the courage, and they're wakening up to, you know, the 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 power of this connection, the realness of this connection. And they don't want you to go because they already see, you know, they, it's like this person is like, don't leave me. Don't go. You know, please don't go away from me. Like he's, he's grabbing for her hand, you know, and you almost like, look, I got to take care of me. I got to heal me. This this serpent that you allowed to come in between us. You got to deal with that. You know, it's almost like they have to deal with this. They, they have to they have to confront their fears. You know, that's why self-love is there. They got to know their own worth. They got to get up off their ass and they got to fight this, this serpent. They got to fight back because that's what you had to do. You know, when you had unrequited love, when this person allowed this snake to draw this wedge, you had nothing to lean on but your strength. And so now they have to muster up the same strength and they have to face their fears. And that's exactly what this person is doing, because why? They got those six eyeballs. That's their gumption. That's their inner gumption. That's their discernment. They're using discernment now and they could see clearly what they was dealing with. They could see that the mother that was trying to draw the wedge or if this was an ex, you know, a father, a husband, a girlfriend, a karmic, whatever. And they're saying, please don't go away because they don't want you to leave them in this cycle. Because with this wheel of fortune, things are turning in your favor. You know, things are turning around. There's a, there's a change. There's a turn of events. And I feel like there's also, you know, a promise of like fortune, fame, success, growth, opulence. And with the sun here, brighter days ahead, prosperity, happiness, joy. What did I say about this person feeling like you was very cold? You know, you're not taking no mess. That's why you put them on time out to begin with. But they're seeing things clearly now. You know, they was out there monkeying around playing games, you know, being childish, immature. But I feel like now they know they have to like they have to also. They have to fight for what they want. They got to confront their fears as well. So let's see. We're going to pull some messages from my deck and then we're going to wrap it up. So we have, look at this, carries you in their spirit. That's why you can't stop thinking of them and they you. And so with please don't go away, this person absolutely is sending you messages telepathically because their energy is self-love and that reduces to 61, which is seven. And seven, like I said, that's the crown chakra. It's also the chariot in traditional tarot. So now they're feeling motivated, encouraged, inspired. They're feeling assertive and confident to come towards you. Right now we have fortunate so this person feels fortunate to have you in their life, to have met you in this lifetime. And we got the wheel of fortune. So they do see the significance of this connection. As we see right here with past life relationship, they do realize like this connection is like it's past life. This is a special union. This ain't nothing for play play. This is somebody that realizes like this is a destiny type thing. Like they can't be playing with this. They're also being reminded by their angels, their spirit team. Like, look, this could be the one. Put your differences to the side and focus on this emotion that you're feeling. Smiling faces sometimes don't tell the truth, very beguiling. So this is the trusting, you know, this is the energy of the people that you may, they may have around them or you may have had around you, which is why you put certain people on timeout, which is why you cut certain people out of your life, which is why you had to learn to forgive. You know, with this you plus me here, I'm seeing you plus me. This person does feel like you are someone that they love, that they genuinely can say they love because they feel this, you know, connection. You know, the feelings are real. They were trying to ignore it. They were trying to act like it didn't exist. And that's why we saw that seven of swords, because it was really it's self deception. Look at this pay increase, promotion, lucrative business deals. Be thankful. So that's why Lakshmi was saying, look, be appreciative, be you know, stop worrying. Everything is working out the way it's supposed to. All of your hard work, you know, when you stop focusing on the problems and focused on the solutions, this is what happened. This is what took place. You started to see growth. You started to see things improving. You started to see your money getting a little, getting a little better. You know, this is like money management. 
You know, patience is also a form of action. Remember, we saw that. We saw the patience card. That's what you've been doing. Patience is a form of action. Patience is also necessary. Instead of rushing into things, you had to slow it down, Selector, so you could work on yourself. And when you work on yourself, really, when you really do the work, when you really start going within, seeking those answers, that's how you can start forgiving. You're not walking around still holding on to animosity and resentment for some ish that happened 10 years ago. So that's why it took time. It's, it's good things take time to create. That's why the divine is not trying to rush this, this, this connection because you, your person, they want your person to be healed because of the work you've been doing. So you, they, they're matching your fly literally. So if some of you are out there talking about, no, my ex came back and he was lying. He was still lying. He was still on that bullshit, that toxic, then that's not your person. Because remember the divine is telling you like, look, this could be the one. You're, you've already met the romantic partner you seek. And remember, we had that card earlier saying the one that you think is your person may not be the person. It may be the person that you think isn't the one. So it's like you may have all your stuff all jacked up. You may really feel somebody is your person, but the divine is trying to tell you, like, look, that person you're focused on is the wrong one. So we got no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So you are divinely protected. You're spiritually protected from all of your enemies. You're protective of yourself and your energy. You're not allowing anybody to come in and steal your thunder, to steal your shine, your joy, your peace, your happiness. You got thunder clapping. So there's a message that's going to come in. I feel like somebody is really going to come in and perhaps express a truth or reveal something to you that you may not have known. I feel like you know it's coming. I feel like intuitively you could be picking up on that because we did see the high priestess. And it says don't eat everyone's food. Don't let everyone in your home. So this is absolutely giving me the vibration that somebody could be having like somebody doing some sort of spell work or somebody doing some sort of, you know, some something to, um, you know, to, to, to bind, control, to, to cast spells. Because I'm picking up with that mistress energy, that Queen of Wands energy. I feel like she is absolutely like. Um, causing some sort of discourse, some sort of some some just very um, heavy energy I get from that energy from that um, Queen of Wands. So this is like that other person, you know. This is like that that entanglement. So whatever or whomever is coming in, this is going to be your sentiment. This is going to be their sentiment. Like where have you been all my life? Because it's just going to happen so naturally, so organic. The chemistry is going to be so real. The synergy is going to be so real. And the love that you feel is going to be so real. And I feel like naturally this is going to attract you to this person. And it's because this is a spiritual union, a spiritual partnership. And I feel like this is somebody that you could have manifested and them you. So let's go ahead and cut this deck, Divine Spirit. And so right now we have, who do we have? Oh, this is, um, this is, um, um, what you call it? Keep on moving soul to soul. So that's what you've been doing. Like I said, you've been moving upward and onward. You're not getting sidetracked. You're not getting bamboozled. You're not going backwards. I just feel like you're moving forward. You know what I'm saying? Whatever was blocked. I feel like the divine is removing any of those things that could have potentially been trying to block you or hinder you. So what did I say about this person? This is a crazy deranged f person. This is on the bottom of the deck. This is the person that caused the confusion in a connection, you know, and this was a rather good connection. As you can see, past life, this could be the one. We got attraction. We got forgiving and learn. like this is somebody you're meant to be with. But this mistress or this uh, karmic, this parent. This overbearing person here won't let it go. And with keep on moving, this person is going to keep on moving. They're going to keep it moving past this person. They're going to leave this energy alone because they realize that this person is very dangerous, very, very um, crazy. And it says standing firmly on your square, grounded and balanced. They're learning from you. You had to teach this person the love language with unrequited love. I feel like this person absolutely... Um, didn't reciprocate. And so this taught you to love yourself. And by you loving yourself and setting boundaries and putting their ass on timeout, they've learned from you. So it's like now this person is building and mustering up the strength, courage, and wisdom to, 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 um, to really block out this, this, this extra energy, this this third party, this kickstand, this karmic, you know, whether that's, like I said, a lover, um, an ex, a mother, a father, whomever this is, they're crazy. This is somebody that's really got a warped perspective, you know, perception on reality. 
This is somebody that controls and manipulates opposed to just letting things happen naturally and organic. That's why this person feels more of a connection and attraction to you because it's just more organic. You know what I'm saying? There's no manipulation. There's no emotional manipulation. There's no crazy deranged attitude they got to be dealing with and fighting with. It's like the, with you, it's just natural. You feel more grounded. You ground them. And so this person sees your worth, your value now. This, with this standing firmly on this, your square, now they know to stand in their power. This is strength, courage, and wisdom. Now they're going to take their power back. Now they're going to speak their truth. They're going to say how they truly feel. And they're going to keep it moving past this person. And that's why this person is really perturbed. And she's like, looks like she's waging war. She's really angry, you know, very fiery and stank, stank, a dank, dank. So why is this um, self-love inner goddess? This person's learning their worth. They're practicing self-care. They're blocking that negative energy out. And past life strength here for the person Scorpio's attracting. Look at this, laws of attraction. So they're learning how to manifest. They're trusting their higher self. Higher self is guiding them. Focus on loving you because you attract what you are. You're going to match Scorpio's vibration when you heal yourself. When you heal from dealing with this toxic ish, this crazy deranged person that had you all mind fucked. That's that energy of somebody that's emotionally manipulative and mentally manipulative. Like they gaslight, they play games, they toy with your feelings and your emotions. But this person is learning how to manifest what they truly desire. They're taking their power back. You know, they've been through something very, very strenuous, very painful, but it's like pressure bust pipes and it, and it builds, you know, it, it creates diamonds and that's what they're learning. So now they're learning to co-create. They're learning that they are the conduits of change. They're learning, like I said, by watching you and they're keeping it moving. Like they're moving forward with their plans to come towards you and they're not getting deterred, you know, by the separation or the lack of communication. Um, and this person is watching this crazy deranged person. And you can see this person just stalking and watching what they're doing. They're all in their business. It's like everything this person does, they're watching. And maybe this person is watching you as well because maybe they caught wind, you know, of how this person um, that's coming towards you feels about you. So they're watching the both of you. They're watching to see if the two of you come into union. Maybe this is why, as I said, there's been some sort of, you know, um, separation because of trust. You know, somebody came in between this connection to cause the confusion between you and this person. But as you can see, these angels are here. So I do feel like this is a spiritual union and we do see that with past life relationship. And this could be the one. So this definitely, you know, eyes on you, jealousy, envy. This is someone, as I said, like secret competition, feeling you're the com competition, you know, and it's because whoever they feel is is their uh, is their um property because that's what i'm hearing is, is is like they're 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 really blocking them out they're moving on you know they're keeping it moving they're leaving that situation alone so why is um time out blossoming unrequited love forgiving and learning here and it says selfish loving me myself and i, I cannot make this ish up that's what you're doing you moved away to focus on self-love self-care you know what i'm saying you built a self uh, like a sanctuary and, and you focused on you. And that's how you were able to forgive because you started to focus on what was real, what was important. That was like, you know, self-care is, is, is how you start to learn what your love language is. And when you learn to love yourself, then you teach other people how they have to treat you when they come in. So by you being selfish and loving yourself, this person is taking a page out of your book. That's why they're in a space of learning to love themselves because now you setting boundaries with them taught them boundaries have to be set because that's how they've gained this appreciation and this attraction towards you because you're not just all giving anymore. You're not just here, take whatever you want. You know what I'm saying? Delegating what you need and requiring, you know, asking of other people what you require is a, also a form of self-love. So this person is learning and they're drawing more attracted to you because self-love makes you more attractive. You're enjoying getting to know what you like again. You're enjoying getting to know the things you don't like. You're enjoying getting to know you again. And this has made you very forgiving. This is why you're focused. You know, you got your eyes on the prize. You're focused, beloved. You're not paying attention to nothing that happened in the past. And this person, look at that, you plus me, love. This love that they feel is growing. They feel attracted to you. They're manifesting you back. 
And it's because, like I said, when somebody thinks of someone constantly, that's almost like visualization. They're using visualization techniques. They could be, you know, kind of like rehearsing what they're going to say. They could be speaking to you. They could be dreaming of you. It's very lucid, the dreams they have. It's almost as if they, if they reach out, they could touch you. They can, they're caressing you and touching you and kissing you in their dreams only to wake up and be like, damn, you know, that's why the song Don't Wake Me, I'm Dreaming was playing because it's like they're having these lucid dreams only to wake up and you're not there. But it's like you're enjoying life. And the more you love yourself, the more you take care of you, the more they feel more attracted to you, which is why you got attraction here. But this you plus me is showing this is an absolutely a kindred spirit, a soulmate, a twin flame. We have um, escape. So they're definitely trying to escape a past situation or escape a crazy karmic, whether that's a relationship they're in or a mother, you know, a, a karmic parent, um, karmic family member, friend, whatever, they're escaping something so that they could come and kick it with you so that they could come and be with you uh, because they do feel like you're this earth angel. Look at this. This is somebody that feels like, you know, you're you're the yang to the yin. And with this past life relationship, they feel very strongly, um, you know, this connection, this synergy to you. Like I said, it's like they're yearning and they also feel like this connection is just very natural, very organic. You know what I'm saying? There's not like you don't have to force anything. It just happens very naturally. And in the separation, it's like sometimes, you know, people got to separate in order to come back together because that's the that's the test. You know, the test of time is is probably one of the lessons you both had to learn. You know, whatever leaves and comes back or returns is what was meant to be. And I feel like the separation you know, between you and this person because you ghosted them. Remember, we had Ghost Town and then we just saw the Six of Swords. So you moved away. You put somebody on timeout. They feel blocked, but they get it. You know what I'm saying? Because now they realize they need to block some ish out of their life that's toxic. So they realized they didn't make enough effort in the past because they weren't lighthearted. They weren't free spirited. They was very proud, egotistical and gassed. They thought it was all about them. And you showed them, nah, son, nah, ma'am. Nah, sir, you deflated that ego. And so with you plus me, this is what makes them love you even more because you're not superficial. You know what I'm saying? You're not superficial. You're real. You're a real one. So why is um, nature? Okay. So we got you plus me. I can't make this up. <laughs> they love you. They know they love you. They know you're the yang to their yin, their twin flame, their soulmate, cosmic companion, kindred spirit. This is absolutely a divine counterpart. This is somebody with that 74 that reduces to 11. This is somebody that absolutely feels like you are the twin flame because they see this past life relationship is in their energy. They're absolutely looking at you like the divine feminine or divine masculine. And I feel like through separation, through lack of communication, through even distance, it's like this is what drew them even more attracted to you. You know what I'm saying? Because you was acting, not even acting, you were unbothered. You didn't allow yourself to be all stressed out and all anxious and all overwhelmed thinking about their ass. You just continued on with life. You continued on growing. You continued learning and growing and evolving. And that's what makes you even more attractive. We Look at the work you've been doing. You've been very busy, preoccupied, too preoccupied to be thinking about unrequited love and separation. Look what you've been able to acquire, what you've been able to accomplish that's what makes you even more attractive. And so we have right now 112. And so 112, this is Cupid playing. So Cupid, like I said, your angels, your guides, they are absolutely conspiring behind the scenes. And you, you can see Cupid here. You know, Cupid is right here on this card. So this was always divine timing. Divine timing was always of the essence. You know, separation, Cupid is there, all these little angels back there. It's like this was always a matter of divine timing. But somebody had to, you know, they had to wisen up as to whatever their connections were with uh, other people or karmics or their family, you know, whatever connections and attachments. And, you know, because that devil showed up during the pre-shuffle with the uh, African-American deck. So that just shows that there was some sort of codependencies or toxicity or addictions, afflictions that needed to be uh, cut off. And so with Cupid, I feel like somebody's now going to shoot their shot because they do feel this love. This is absolutely somebody who feels you're the one. And this is absolutely going to change the whole. Um, this is going to change the whole uh, direction of your life moving forward. I feel you and this person have both learned uh, independence. So you both can survive 
independently of another person. So that means you're both in harmony, both in balance. You're both very much in alignment with your higher selves. And so with this deflated ego, now the pride is put aside and now someone could come to you very humbly and they could say, look, you know, Cupid, I, I love you. Or this is somebody that could really come in and shoot their shot now. Look at that. I want to get to know you better digging you. So somebody wants to reintroduce themselves. Remember I was saying with intro, somebody wants to reintroduce themselves. They want to introduce themselves to the introduce you to the new version of themselves. And this is because they're having this epiphany like this could be the one. Why are you playing games? Like, well, you playing with your life, beloved. You playing, playing with your future. There's no doubt about it. Lord knows I really mean it. So why is pride independent? This could be the one and the wheel of fortune here for the outcome for my beloved Scorpios for who's coming in. My spirit. Ooh, Lord. Mirror reflects. Can they be a reflection of the shadow side of you? So what did I say? You and this person definitely are mirroring one another. That's usually what twin flames do. So we got believe you can and you will. These all fell on the floor. So I'm not taking the ones that fell on the floor. These fell here on the table. I'm not taking these, but I am going to expound. So believe you can and you will. So that's that hope. That's that optimism. That's like that, that star quality where you don't give up. You just persevere through whatever. Secret admirer loves what they see. Didn't I say somebody was watching you from a distance and dreams? Don't forget them. They are more than something you wake up from, believe. So didn't I say somebody was also dreaming of you? And the dreams were so lucid that it was like they didn't even want to wake up from them because in the dream they were caressing you, holding you, kissing you, laughing with you, building with you, a family. You probably had a couple of babies with this person. Like this person definitely sees you as that, that um, divine counterpart. Thank you, spirit. So on the bottom of the deck, sacred space. So someone is spending a lot of time um, at a sacred space, maybe a body of water, seeking, you know, some sort of guidance, looking for direction, looking for some divine download, spending a lot of time connecting, building and devoting that time and energy uh, with to their angels, ancestors, um, you know, maybe giving offerings as well. That's a necessity whenever, you know, you see your angels come through for you with a blessing, with a reward, you know, definitely give uh, an, an offering to that deity, to that angel, you know, you could go outside and, and just, you know, bury like, um, you know, a coin. You could put like money in front of a tree and then pour water just to give an offering or even liquor. You can put money down, you know, bury that in the ground in front of a tree and just give an offering. Or you could give an offering on your altar of food, drink, whatever that deity uh, tends to like. Uh, but always give thanks to your angels and guides whenever they give you a blessing. Um, again, we have 112 and this is called come see me. So this person definitely and remember we had come on. So this person is coming towards you, I feel, because we had that come on. And I forgot who that artist was, but um, somebody is coming towards you. And I feel like with this wheel of fortune, this is somebody that's destined to be in your life because they realize you're the one. And they're very, very uh, confident now because they feel independent. And they're coming towards you because you're like that earth angel. It says you are my precious. So you are absolutely somebody that has taught this person something. They see you as very beautiful, very rare. You know, you have really taught them and healed them through and nurtured them through some really difficult times, whether you realize that or not. And they want to come towards you. It says date night, long walks, uh, live bands and great laughs, great conversations. So this is going to put a lot of smiles on your face. I feel this person is absolutely going to be more chivalrous, more charming. Um, they're going to be more giving of themselves, whereas in the past they could have been more reserved or they could have been approved, like just not interested in nothing, always got a stank face. You couldn't please them. And I feel like now they're just like letting their hair down, going to be a little more spontaneous and open minded. Um, but they see that you're rare. So something about your energy just draws them in uh, because they may have had experiences that shows them that there's something different about you and something different um, about this connection. Um, whatever evil was being sent to you by this crazy deranged or even this person is being returned to sender. It says return back to sender. Every evil eye shall go blind. So this crazy deranged person that's trying to cast spells and do some sort of um, Juju voodoo hoodoo is being sent back to sender because, as I said, this is a very spiritually protected union. You can see these angels are conspiring behind the scenes to bring this union into fruition. And as I said, this is a destiny 
type of love, destiny type of situation. So this is something that nobody can come in between. Um, we got the blue heron and I want to share with you all, like I literally saw a blue heron yesterday three times. Um, me and my daughter, we took a nature walk yesterday, a very beautiful day we had. Um, there were so many angelic and spiritual messages all around us, but, um, we took a nature walk and we saw a blue heron up close and personal. And this blue heron, uh, literally it flew over us and it casted this huge shadow. And when we looked up, we saw the back legs. And this is when we first started our nature walk on our, um, trail that's right outside our complex. So as we went deeper into, um, you know, the, on the nature trail, um, we saw other animal totems. We saw cardinals. We saw bluebirds. Um, of course, we saw hawks. Um, but we walked all the way. Uh, it, was, it had to be about a four mile walk. And then upon us returning, um, that same blue heron that we saw in the sky that casted this shadow right above us was standing right in front of us. And it was standing in this little swampy area and we were walking and I noticed it like Zariah, look, you know, my daughter, I, I was telling her, look, you know, and she was like, what? And I was like, look at the blue hair. And she's like, where? And I'm like, right there. And he was just standing so still and so beautiful. And so this blue heron is, is assuring you that the most high is watching over you. You have protection. This is a, uh, a, an animal totem, which is symbolic of prosperity, self-determination, self-resilience, inner peace and stability and psychic powers. So always trust your intuition. Um, I feel you are highly sensitive to energy and I feel like you also are very uh, much picking up on any potential attacks that be, could, could be coming towards you. Um, and I feel like, you know, with this message, uh, you're, you're protected. Um, so with this energy here on the bottom of the deck, I do feel like, you know, for many of you all, you need to give offerings to your deities, your angels, your ancestors, especially when you start seeing these wish fulfillments come through, uh, because there are a lot of messages saying that you're going to be very abundant and very successful. Um, but this is your beautiful reading, beloved Scorpios. I hope the message has resonated. If you found that it did, please be kind. Hit the like, the share, the subscribe button. Definitely hit the bell notification so that you know whenever I upload. Uh, if you are new, I hope you stay a while. And if you are returning, beloveds, you already know what it is. Until next time, love is love is love. Send a big fat ashe. Peace.